is the Cam Baker Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. A big, massive, warm welcome to this, the one you've been waiting for, folks. It is Freaky Friday. That's right, it is that time of week again. And we have assembled a really good woo crew for you tonight. I've got JD, I've got Johnny Whistles, and I've got Joe Joseph. Joe, another Freaky Friday, yes, man. Ah, yes, another one, of course. I wait all week for this. <laughs> I know it's and boy, the, this is a good one tonight. Definitely. It's going to be totally unscripted. It's going to be all the kind of stuff we love to get into. We've got some earth changes. We've got some hollow earth. And we've even <sighs> got something called koala cars. Koala folks, cars. Before we get there, we're also joined tonight by regular KBS man, Johnny Whistles. How are you doing, man? Fine and dandy, bro. I'm just reflecting. Just you know, now. reflecting on the week's shows, John. Yeah, are just, you uh, now? Yes. Well, oh, you just make the nice. most of your reflection because David Cameron is coming after antics like that. Just mm-hmm. you watch yourself, you violent, non-violent terrorist or whatever he's calling you this week. <laughs> and I heard a noise there, and that is the red pill, Mr. JD. How are you doing, man? Oh, so good, man. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you gentlemen on a Friday night, try and wash off a little of these uh, super heavy stories that we go through during the uh, weekdays, you know? You know, that's what we were just talking about there before the show, Joe. It's almost sometimes when we do that five cents reality news, the stuff that's covered on the mainstream, I can do it for an hour and I feel dirty by the time I come off air. It's just so depressing. Yeah, it's horrible, Uh, man. So true, so true. Mm -hmm. And I find it even harder now more so than ever before to talk about politics and things like that because it just yeah because it's right, all it fraud makes, it just makes you feel dirty yeah it's all fraud man it makes you want to go yeah. uh move to costa rica or patagonia or something and never I'm talk to another you, i'm gonna get a herd of yaks and just never deal with anything but yaks i just anymore, want a you know? banana plantation or something right seriously i'm i'm you with know? you brother i'm with you I'll tell you what, the way these earth changes are ramping up, guys, we might well have some new land rising out of the sea that we can claim as our own. But before we get into all the earth changes with Joe, he's got an update on all these volcanoes going off. Let's hit a bit of the chat room, guys. Tonight, 65 in the chat room. Can you wow. believe that? Wow. Unbelievable. Day. So then, let's start. We've got AI, Andy Hun, Angel Whispers. Catalyze this as a tricky, do you want to know? John Teeter was here, but when? I always have to ask you that. <laughs> Naval Gazer, Paisley Buddy, Red Inky, Scottish John himself. Vengeance for me, one slash who? Free, we Free, Zyla, Orwell's Oracle, Dartmoor Dog, Judy. We've got Pepe, we've got DJ B2, we've got Harpic, Cave Lady, Time Lord, Monkey Dude, Doc Warrior, Irish Pete, the one and only Dr. Harry Wiener. We've got Jai D, Joe, myself. We've got Johnny Whistles, and Popeye will be joining us soon, not only just on here, but in the chat. We've got Space Plankton, D, Wotan, Smug, the Tinfoil Man. Perfect name for tonight, sir, and I hope you've got plenty handy. Then we've got the one and only <laughs> Tempest Harbour. We've got Hugh, Taffy, Bag of Chips, give us one. Icon Reese, Sid Beeston, and we've got Mystical Fairy. Sabrosa, Biryani. You know you could get hungry reading out this list, guys. <laughs> We've got Iferian, <laughs> time travelling elf, excellent stuff. Have you ever met John Teeter? Just a quick question. The seven three 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 Steve Pooh Brain Doctor Blues Stushy Truth Script an angry Scouser ain't you all angry? One stoned crow DP kill me now stealthy. Kev works for CERN. On that note, guys, we have to get into CERN and Google Maps later oh, on. Oh, good Please for Hattie. Remind me. We've got Robert S. James Goddard eight eight three. Dushkinu, yes, that is the best name so far. Oblivion Sector, they kill us. Nephilim, number one. Dusty Dead Bodies, that's Jimmy Savile's favourite person in the chat, folks. And Transpersonals, I don't know how many's in there now, guys. 71 in the chat. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I don't even know how many are on the stream here, guys, but this is, it's growing out of control. And Joe, Mm -hmm. something else that is out of control right now are these damn volcanoes. I don't even know how many. But they, they're like, I have a volcano in my soundboard. I heard that there. That was almost like listening to like the coolest host in the whole of Alternative <laughs> Media. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I got to hear myself. 
Cool. <laughs> anyway, dude, uh, yeah, volcanoes. There's been a lot of earthquake and volcanic activity, especially recently, uh, you know, uh, in uh, the Himalayas. Uh, what the hell's going on out there, you know? You know what struck me the other day was the fact that yeah. we were trying to claim that the 7.3 was an aftershock. That's surely a quake in its own From, right, guys. Yeah. How is that an aftershock? <laughs> I'm yeah, still trying to figure that out. <laughs> that's yeah, that a makes hell of no an sense aftershock. At all. Mm -hmm. And what did it follow? What was the one that was before that? Um, 7.8, I believe. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So those are just extra earthquakes. I don't really, extra, I think those are just, yeah. I mean, everything is an aftershock really, because there's already been an, an earthquake. So I mean, there's the shock and then I yeah. guess it's after. But that the whole earth. fault line, guys, if you follow that fault line down from India, you end up down at Papa, New Guinea. Now we've also seen massive quakes around there and then it travels right the way back up the fault line to Nepal again. So it makes you wonder what is going on over in that side of the world right now. What is putting so much pressure on there? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, M Michael Snyder wrote an article about this called uh, 40 Volcanoes Are Erupting Right Now, and 34 of them are along the Ring of Fire. He said, uh, you may not have noticed, but our planet's becoming increasingly unstable. According to Volcano Discovery, 40 volcanoes around the globe are erupting right now, and only six of them are not along the ring of fire. And if that doesn't, if that sounds like a, a very high number to you, that's because it is a very high number. Um, there were a total of 3,542 volcanic eruptions during the entire 20th century. And when you divide that number by 100, that gives you about 35 volcanic eruptions per year. So the number of volcanoes that are erupting right now is well above the 20th century's average for an entire calendar year. Hmm. You know, and, and of course, we're witnessing a tremendous amount of earthquake activity as well, Kev. Definitely, Joe. And what worries me here is and I've looked at earthquakes quite a lot ever since I got into the research inside of things. And when you look at the Ring of Fire, obviously you can look at the map and the one area that really needs to release some pressure and has done for some time now is the Californian coast and it really really worries me when you see everywhere else on that ring lighting up and shaking and that place is still sitting there and it hasn't gone yet I mean we've got friends over there like Nano and Johnny you've got family over there man and I know you like looking at this kind of earth changes stuff but I'm particularly worried about California right now yeah, well, California, I think, is long overdue, the, the big one, Kev. Um, but, I, Kev, I, I think that we, we can't rule out the fact that something could be coming into our solar system and pulling on the planet, because we've heard this for how long now, do you know what I mean? And the way things are going on Earth, it just looks as if something's changing. I don't know what it is. Right, so you're going down the kind of Nibiru road. We'll oh, oh, oh. Uh, we'll, hang on, guys. We'll come back and we'll visit that well, in a moment. Not, Johnny, did you see Star Trek? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. I just just checking. Yeah, the Nibiru shout out at the start of that, and that's why I'm really <laughs> looking exactly. forward to Star Wars because Jai D, with the director that's making that film, no doubt he'll be hiding things in plain sight at the start of Star Wars as well. But we've had Nibiru thrown out there. What's your take on all this uptick in Earth changes, man? Well, I was just going to point out how interesting it It seems to me uh, that I saw a video recently that was talking about how the shallowness of all of these earthquakes is really consistent. We've seen a lot of these quakes that are only like six kilometers deep, and that seems really shallow to me, and there's been a lot of those lately. And also, since you guys were kind of bringing up the California, isn't it interesting that there's a huge movie coming out that's basically talking about California falling into the ocean? Uh, what is it called? Uh, does anybody know what movie I'm talking I, I about? Think it's actually the New Madrid fault line they're dealing yeah. with, isn't it? Yeah. New no, Mad the New Madrid is here in uh, in Missouri. I think the film that's in Missouri. I think, I think that new Missouri. film's actually dealing with that one, is it not? Because there's one coming out about the New Madrid fault line. I know that. No, oh, this yeah. is a this is a big Cali quake one. Well, man. See, there's two. Film wow. programming there must be mm -hmm. wow. San Andreas. Now, this one is San Andreas, is what it's called. I'll drop wow. the uh, I'll drop we'll the trailer in the chat yeah. room. 
It's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's scary as heck, man. And they're basically saying that, you know, the big one is going to hit and uh, it's not going to be, you're going to, it's going to happen on the West Coast, but you're going to feel it on the East Coast. You know, I mean, they're wow. talking about, it's, it's pretty impressive. I, I worry about San Francisco, really, because of the symbology of that play, the Golden but, Gate. You know, I mean, it just sounds to me like, I know it sounds a bit woo, guys, but if it's going to happen <laughs> anywhere, how symbolic would that be, seeing a Golden Gate falling into the abyss? Well, I guess, I mean, it's bound to happen sometime. <laughs> you know, it might happen a lot sooner than we think. If we start building machines with, oh, big, huge, massive electromagnetic fields, just saying. Mm-hmm. No, you're, you're right, man. I uh, I can't agree more. Whistles, what do you, what do you got? Well, there's been talk for a number of years now about the half of the Canary Islands sliding into the sea, and that would yes. cause... A tidal wave in New York. Like a thousand feet high, right? Yes. That would suck. That's the That'd El Hierro volcano. That's the El Hierro. That's right, Johnny. The base of that basically slides in. If you picture the water, guys, it gets forced up in a big wall. And like Joe says there, it heads towards New York at a tremendous rate of knots. And that's something they've known about for some time. And, you know, if there was genuine terrorists out there... If I was a terrorist, I'd be looking at something like that. It's going Ooh, a, couple of, a couple of nicely placed dynamite sticks, JD. It's a like bro, some mad I, scientist I, stuff. I, how though. evil do you have to actually be, though? You know what I mean? That's yeah, like, that's like full. That's not terrorism, that's, man. That's like did I just evil. give away my dark side. One million dollars, I mean, you know? Dude, that's like <laughs> that is the. You've got to really be dark. That's all <laughs> I can say. Damn. Don't annoy me, guys. Do not annoy me. <laughs> 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 but think about Nepal, right? So that was just hit by the worst earthquake that it had in about 80 years. Mm-hmm. And scientists are telling us that the Himalayas actually dropped by an astounding three feet as a result of that one earthquake. So, so no one will ever be at the at the height that they were at that first initial Everest climb again. No one will ever be right. able to get to that. That's crazy. That's crazy. It makes you wonder how, what's underneath all of that, though. Exactly. So how much m- more does the planet have to shake before people start paying attention? That's my question. I mean, th- we're, we're shaking. Uh, volcanoes are going crazy. You know, it's crazy. Nebraska. Now, they say, you know, a lot of it has to do with fracking. But is it necessarily so? Or is it just an uptick in activity? Well, I'm sure the fracking doesn't help. I mean, putting viscous material down into those uh, fault lines is not going to do you any good. But, you know, we haven't even brought up the one, uh, the volcano that's kicking off in Japan right now, too, that hasn't gone off since the 12th century. Remember, there's like a uh, there's a little yep. area up there where people go to sit in hot springs. It's like one of the most famous places. And they totally closed that park earlier this week because they had something like 100 volcanic tremors just going on. Again, that thing hasn't erupted since the 12th century. So wow. uh, this it's getting pretty astounding. But do you guys think it's, I mean, are we talking ex- Expanding Earth here? Are we talking Nibiru? Mm. Are we talking Surd? You know, where are we going? What about with all the this? sun? What about the sun, though? Think about that, right? So when we go outside now, and if you've been around long enough, you remember how it used to be. The sun has not been, uh, or at least I don't remember, the sun ever being as strong as it has been over wasn't the last it, like five, ten yellow? years. I used to draw it when I was a kid, and I would draw it yellow, and now I look yellow. at it, and it's white. It looks white, right? Yeah, but yeah. It, but even so, you know, everybody says, well, the sun is quieting down. Well, the sun is still this big f- ball of fusion plasma hotness, right? Mm-hmm. And it's got all this radiation. Well, if it's not doing its thing and acting like uh, it should be, then it has a direct effect on our planet. And that's, that's huge, wouldn't you say whistles? I mean, I would have to say that that the uh, there's a cosmic element to this as well. Yeah, I think so, Joe. Um, a lot of the times when we see coronal holes facing Earth, um, we get an uptick in quakes. Um, but Joe, it could only be a matter of time before that big one of them big filaments or eruptions off the sun hits yeah. the earth again and the thing is we are absolutely totally owned by electronic devices and we will god we will die yeah, out you, very quick you want to know something whistles there, there was just somebody just did a a study 
on, uh, first of all, we are not hardened against EMP, especially like our electric grid. But think about this. Uh, it would only cost $2 billion to harden our electrical grid to EMP. Uh, right, right there, all of a sudden, $2 billion. We spend $1.88 trillion here in the United States on regulation, on just regulatory agencies. $1.88 trillion a year. It costs $2 billion to harden our electrical grid against EMP. Where's our priorities, man? <laughs> you know? It can be avoided. But it looks like people are all caught up in the mess. Do you think we're being set up for, to, for failure here? I don't know. I saw Whistles, literally. what do you think? I was just going to say, it just shows you, I mean, how stupid people are. Do you know, I mean, the the things that's going on go, are going on in Earth. They build nuclear power stations on fault lines. You know, I mean, you think that they would have learned the lesson, the very first one that went off and caused a disaster, that they would say, oh, "Listen, whoa, this can't happen." Do you know what I mean? But they put them all over the world, and something goes. If, if Fukushima goes again, oh. That's bye-bye time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, th well, here's the other thing, too. You know, everybody thinks Fukushima, Fukushima. Okay. But if there's a um, an earthquake, look at how many other uh, nuclear reactors are built around a fault line, especially here in the United States. Uh, all, all of that same design, that same quality GE same, design same that we see over in Fukushima. Yeah. Same thing. You That's see, here's plan. the thing, guys, and this is the kind of thing I was hinting at last night to the listeners. We're thinking about this as humans, normal, rational, loving, caring humans. We always say to ourselves, well, how can they go building things like nuclear power plants on fault lines? And how can they go poisoning their own water and their own food and their own planet that they share with us? They're hybrids. They are not humans like us. They're psychopaths and they're also different. And they're doing the bidding of whatever these entities are that we keep talking about on here. It's the only thing that makes sense. That explains the whole upside downness of this world. Why are they so keen on war when love is the emotion that we should be after? There's such a few people as well, guys, because they are doing the bidding. Everything comes down to frequency. Even these earthquakes are caused by frequencies, guys. Mm -hmm. And that is what these entities via these hybrids, these puppets that we like to point out all the time, exactly why they're doing the chemtrailing. That's why they're putting fluoride in your water. That's why they're giving you poisoned food. They don't care about us because they are different. Maybe they don't know they're different. Who knows? But they are different. Well, if it seems like earthquakes and, er and erupting volcanoes are happening more frequently, that's because they are. Looking at global magnitude six or greater earthquakes from 1980 to 1989 there was an average of 108.5 earthquakes per year from 2000 to 2009 the planet averaged 160.9 earthquakes per year that's a 38.9 percent increase in magnitude six earthquakes in just in recent years so unrest seems to be growing among all the world's super volcanoes as well. You know, like Iceland. Iceland's probably one of the most dangerous volcanoes on the planet. And then you got uh, Santorini in Greece. And you got um, uh, Yellowstone and the Long Valley calderas. And then you've got Laguna del Mole in uh, Chile. And there, there's a couple of other ones as well. And all of this is happening. You know, it it makes you wonder, hmm, why were they so focused at building everything underground? You know, could it be because of uh, earth changes that are that are heading on that, that are on the way that they know about? I don't know. What do you think, Whistles? I don't know. It just seems weird, Joe. Um, some of the things that they're doing again. Even the government buying all the bullets again and giving them to the post office, you're giving them to people like forest commissions and everything else. You know what I mean? Giving them hollow point bullets. Who are they kidding? 
I don't know. Something something tells me that. Um, and again, you know, we see a lot of this of this message, the messaging in in Hollywood. Uh, and when you look at um, um, a lot of the the what was that last one that was the uh, gosh <laughs> I can't remember the one with the black holes. Help me out. The one with Tr- the black uh, hole, Interstellar. Thank you. You Interstellar, welcome. yeah. So Interstellar, right? All of a sudden, there's this plague that's like killing off all of the plants. They can't kill it. All he can do is burn the crops and all, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It just seems like what we're seeing now is the exact same thing going on, just on a much more mild scale. It hasn't really kicked off yet. But look at what's going on in the Midwest, where or in, in the in the far in the in the uh, American West, California. Uh, where they've killed off all the cattle, mm-hmm. um, that, that they can't plant as much because of the water shortage, and um, you're just the, seeing the, the the price of food skyrocket. The largest avian flu outbreak now, right? They've called like 30 exactly. million birds, so we're losing turkey, yes. we're losing the eggs. I mean, that's all in the Midwest, and just don't forget either, three miles away from where the Gulf disaster happened, they're going to go ahead and drill again. Just good, put throwing that out there. We're going to go ahead and do we'll another another big old hole right next to where we couldn't quite get it right last time and you know, basically right. destroyed the Gulf. We're all over, we're all over this this Third time. Time's though. a charm, buddy. <laughs> that's right, buddy. Good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> go team. <laughs> uh, Popeye, welcome, uh, welcome aboard, buddy. Hello, boys. Sorry, it took me a few extra minutes. I had to throw in a pot of coffee as well as feed the little scoundrels. But I'm here now for the, the rest of the uh, broadcast. So very nice. I, awesome, you guys are man. talking earth changes. Very fitting. Um, yes. And I were out on the road. We noticed a ton of them, actually, uh, to the point where even before I had picked her up when I was first driving up through, like, uh, Kansas and up into uh, Iowa, I called her on the phone and I asked her, I said, can you Google and see if there's been earthquakes or anything like that uh, in this area? And she was doing it. And then when we were driving, she was taking note of all the different things we had noticed. Because like, you'd be driving and you'd look out at a field and you could see it was like a flat field. And then there'd be a section where it looked like either part of it raised or part of it dropped, depending on you know where you looked. And you could see it was like very rapid, like it broke. And there was no stream. Like, okay, sometimes there's a little stream or something there, but there was no streams. So it was something moved. The earth moved, it flexed, whatever you want to call it. And we noticed this all over. So the question was, first we were like, well, maybe it's from fracking. But, hmm, is it all from fracking? Or do you think that there's more, it has more to do with earth changes itself, like the earth flexing, things like that? I don't know. I, I, I say more so. I'm leaning more towards, I mean, I'm sure some of the earthquakes and stuff are from fracking, but what her and I saw, a lot of it, I think, honestly, comes from earth changes itself and the earth either expanding or moving volcanoes, plate tectonics. Interesting stuff, though. I saw it with my own two eyes. That's where we I don't... come from as well. I'm an expanding earth kind of guy. JD, Me you mentioned it earlier. I think there's something to that. I really do. You could even tie in the giants and stuff like that to this. Because if the Earth was smaller back in the day, then the gravity would have been different, and that would explain how you could have things growing to ginormous heights. So we have expanded. I think so, too. I think so, just from what I've seen. I didn't mean to cut you off, J.D. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I was just going to say, I think, you know, we talk a lot on the show about how everything that they do from the elite standpoint has got is kind of multifaceted. And since we don't really know all of this crap that they're plugging into the ground with the fracking, it still kind of makes me believe that even if maybe if they knew that there was going to be some expansion, they could kind of start targeting areas and putting some viscous fluids down there and to make sure things were going to move kind of the way they anticipated them to move. Maybe they're doing some of that the, uh, to kind of alleviate pressure on some of their deep underground bases or something, you know? Well, that's very true. I've seen all the bases that have popped up, well, popped up, popped down in, in America underground. There's rumored to be underground tunnels from Westminster here in the UK that transport our nuclear weapons as well. They're supposed to go all over the UK. These underground bases, guys, I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah, I you know, I want to bring something up. This is actually a point that Christina brought up. Her and I got into this deep like conversation about underground bases and tunnels traversing. And I will be the first one to tell you, yes, there are tunnels and there are underground bases, but some of the people that think that these tunnels connect from like one side of the country to the other, 
And I even thought about it at one point that maybe they could. But then she brought up a good point. Well, what about plate tectonics? What about if the Earth shifts? That tunnel would constantly be cracking. It would have to be made of something that it could allow for flexion, you know, five to ten feet in any direction, up, down, left, right. You know, full cylindrical motion, especially if it's a tube, right? So just saying, good point that, you know, I'm sure there probably are underground tunnels and stuff, but I don't know if uh, they would have to be at some points where they were connected and you had to go above ground. I would just think because of, you know, the, the immensity of going through the earth and, and it, you, again, you get this perspective when you go out on the road and actually see it with your own two eyes, as opposed to just like Google earthing it. But go ahead, Jamie. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, there's a couple of videos on uh, some of the cave systems that are here in Missouri. You know, they've, they've got all these dug out limestone caves that they use to store stuff in. And there's a, there's a pretty famous video online about the guy driving a truck through one of those. We got to go to this quick three minute break. So when we come back, we'll keep talking about these underground tunnels, maglev trains, and the likelihood of them actually existing. So keep it right here, guys. 80 in the chat tonight. Unbelievable. Freaky 83, no joke. You are all instructed to hit share during the break. We want one. Hey. You are listening to the True Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate. No hype. No, 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 no fear. Welcome back, everyone, to this, the record-setting Freaky Friday, right here oh. on www.truthfrequencyradio.com. There are uh, 91 beautiful souls in the chat room and over 2,000 listening live on the streams. Guys, what, what are we doing? The, what the hell did we do for this? I mean, seriously, what's going on? I'm a little scared. It's all right. I know. <laughs> it's all right. It's cool. You know why? Because they like it. They like it freaky. And this is so, what we were saying at the start this is of what the show. We do. I think people need this. They really, yeah. really need this. Got to unwind, man. Definitely. And we were talking about all the earth changes before the break, where yeah. do we want to go now? Because maybe we should go to Popeye here, actually. Because, Popeye, you were on a road trip. You've looked at various um, His name markers. is not Popeye anymore. Oh, no. What's Let's his just new get name? this straight, okay? His name is Radiation Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I went around and radiated New Mexico, Joe? Yes. You they, glow now. You have a glow about you. I, I noticed was- that. I was holding a uh, a radiated quartz rock. Ah, see, see. Yeah, I, I actually even make a comment in the video. I'm sitting there holding the rock, and Christina's taking a reading with her Geiger. And I, and after she takes the reading, you hear me go, "That's nice." I'm holding a radiated piece of quartz. Yum. <laughs> uh, yeah, very nice. Thank you. Well, man, man, Coulter says it. It's okay. It's good for you. Like I Just said, you had bit. a glow yeah. about you. But, you know, you were at a crater of a meteor strike as well. And, you know, yeah, there's been news in the past yeah. few days about asteroids flying about. There's supposed to be one coming in July to end us all again. What was that like, man? What was it like being there? Have you, have you ever seen a picture of that thing before? Yes, I've seen pictures of it, but it's not okay. the same as you being there, man. No. Well, no, 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 no. You have to actually experiencing it, uh, experience it for yourself. Uh, the, when you see it with your own two eyes, it's, a, uh, it's one of those. I've, I've seen it before, so I knew that when we went there, it was going to be an experience. And uh, in fact, when we first went there, Christina took this huge breath in. She was like, <gasps> when she looked at it for the first time. And I was like, I, I know, it's amazing. She actually grabbed my hand and squeezed my hand. I thought she was going to break my damn hand. It's, it's like that. It's like seeing the Grand Canyon. You feel that you're about the size of a grain of sand in comparison to other things out there in the world. It, it kind of shifts your perspective a little bit. That hole, at the time it was created, was like 750 feet deep, something like that. Um, and now it's about, with over the course of time, with erosion and the rain washing stuff down from the sides, it's about 600 and something feet deep. But it's like a mile across, like 600 feet deep. And it was created by something the size of two tractor trailers end to end in length. And it, I mean, it wasn't like the, the rock wasn't like a mile high or anything. It was. It was relatively small compared to the hole that it created, but the speed that it was traveling, the angle, and um, just the way it hit and the energy release created this monstrous hole in the ground. Now, I can honestly tell you, I had some interesting, I've had interesting experiences before, but I was able to actually get into 9 11 truth on the rim of this crater. Oh, you know wow. That? Oh, yeah, you, you 
I even gave out my business cards. Thank you. I knew you would too. You like a shameless car salesman too. I bet you. Were you wearing a plaid jacket and wearing a fedora? It, thank you to Christina for having my cards in her purse because I, I totally left them in the car and like I was like, oh, I'm not going to need these. We're going to be on a meeting. Yes, but talk to my uh, talk to my uh, co-pilot, don't for, that, uh, Christina, don't, please. Well, don't you hate that when you leave the house without your business cards? Yes, for not my business cards. Yes. No, they were in the car. I just figured I'd leave them in the, in the car. Well, I didn't well, I, I'm going to be a bit controversial <laughs> here, no doubt. But when you were stood on the lip of this crater, did you think to yourself, possibly, just possibly? That is not that crater per se, but this could have been how life came to this planet, albeit microbial. Well, it could be one way, um, but the energy release by that thing, dude, when you see like that, the, I, I wouldn't have, I mean, I, if I could be like Superman and hover above the ground and watch it from a distance when it happened, like it'd be cool, but I would not want to have been on the ground. I don't know if any life inside of that asteroid or meteor or whatever, I think it was a meteor, uh, would have survived because... A, it was made of um, iron, so it, it it was metal. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Damn, it it's like a big cannonball, dude. It weighs the piece that I have a picture of it. It's only like four or five feet, maybe not even like four feet wide, and it weighs over fourteen hundred pounds. It's, that's that's crazy. And that's the only piece, that's the largest piece that they recovered from it. Most of it is still in the bottom of the crater, about three, four thousand feet underneath it. Like they exploded like yeah, exploded like shot. It just went like you know, like right down. Probably on, a little and, bit of molten iron too. I would think. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That would yeah. suck. That'd make it's, your day just, really bad. Well, that's how the nine eleven truth <laughs> got brought up. We were standing there, and the kid goes. There was this kid there with his father, and he goes, can you imagine the temperatures it would need? He was like this little scientist. <laughs> and he's like, can you imagine the temperatures needed How to vaporize be- metal? And I looked at him. I said, yeah, because, you know, metal doesn't melt from office fires and, temp- you know, the temperature of, like, simple office fires alone. And he looked at me. <laughs> and I started, <laughs> I started alluding to things like that. And then, it's like, come on, Junior, come along. We ran into a pretty awake, uh, these two guys that were on, like, walkabout. And uh, we we ran into them on the rim of the crater. That's who ended up. We ended up giving out the business cards to. So uh, it was pretty cool. Like you know, I I got to stand on the rim of a meteor crater and throw truth bombs out to people at the same time. So it was uh, pretty interesting. Oh, and the other thing we did was that was one of the other spots that we put Marseille's ashes. Uh, we put her there, and we put her in the uh, at six different locations in the Grand Canyon. So. Yeah, the my my second trip to the meteor crater was way more eventful than the first time I was there about eighteen years ago. So, I'm just thinking of something here as well with Popeye saying of the metallic properties of this meteor, guys, and we're shoving on the biggest magnet ever known in the universe, at least that we think of <laughs> at CERN, and we're told that we're going to be struck by one in July, and it's we're going to be colliding the strongest particles in when July. Hmm, makes me wonder. Are they going to grab an asteroid? Yeah. But there's something before that. Before that even takes place. You know that, right? And it and it's happening soon. Another like 13 days. There's a planetary alignment that's coming up. Um that uh certain people eh Nostradamus. This is something that some people are saying Nostradamus could be a fulfillment of say Nostradamus's prophecy. And uh, basically, it suggests a like a 9.8 earthquake in California on the 28th of May. <laughs> Why California now, that's a, specifically? That's that's a woo. Uh, I don't know um, because uh, let's see. This is there will be a series of planetary alignments where Venus and Mercury will be charged up on the North America Pacific side of the globe, which will cause a huge earthquake in California. Nostradamus also apparently predicted the planetary positions for the day in a mysterious quatrain where he writes, uh, The trembling so hard in the month of May, Saturn, Capricorn, Jupiter, Mercury, in Taurus, Venus also, Cancer, Mars, and Virgo, hail will fall larger than an egg. So that's uh, Nostradamus. Hmm. Can I had a go at me last planet, week for bringing up the web bots. Come can on. I, can I just tell you that I'm not worried about any of these prophecies because if the come if, a, on, if come another on, planet or a comet is going to come in and, and hit us, there's really nothing you can trust it's me. Not, go out to the meteor crater and stand on the rim of the meteor crater and don't look in the hole. Look <laughs> outside. 
look out. No, seriously, look out into the desert. Hey, didn't somebody die there while you were there? No, that was at the Grand Canyon. I'll get into that. But okay. when, when you're at the meteor crater and you look to the outside of the crater, you can actually see the ripples, like the shock wave as it traveled. You can see how it rippled the ground, like, you know, yeah. thousands, thousands and thousands of years ago. And when you look at it, it kind of looks like little rolling hills. And you realize that's not rolling hills. That's from the shock wave spreading out. Like it, you can imagine the ground being liquid right there. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, man. Crazy, dude. But that's what happens wow. during an earthquake, man. When I was in Seattle back in like 96, yeah, the there was a pretty like, good earthquake. I was in my basement and we had one of, the, you know, you could stand up in the basement and we had like those windows that are kind of right where the ground meets, you know, where your foundation is. And you, you basically have like a street view. And I watched the streets like, I mean, it looked like water, man. And the cars were doing the jibbit and jiving. And they were, I mean, it looked like waves of concrete going down the street. And there was definitely a minute there where I thought, okay, this is going to get worse or this is going to get better. And it got worse and our ceiling fell in and it was awesome. But uh, yeah, man, I was, I've never seen one before, like in real life. And to see the ground acting like water is something that I've, I've never experienced before. And it really, really kind of puts it into perspective for you. If there was something bigger than that that hit and it did that, I mean, oh man, the devastation well, that it would cause you, to be. Like the, the, the media crater is out in the middle of the desert. So like <clears throat> Route 40 goes by it, but it's about six miles away. So you have to get off on what's called Meteor Crater Road and then you drive into the crater. And we're driving. It's funny because Christina thought it was a little tiny hole in the ground. And we're driving. And I'm like, you see that thing over there? It looks like a see mountain. See that thing over straight ahead? Yeah, yeah. what's that? What's I'm that? Like, oh, it's like a that's... crater. Ah! <laughs> is it like that? Well, can it you wasn't see, like, like this, that, was it? Yeah, you see like this 50, 60 foot like mountain, like hill mesa thing. And I'm like, you see that? I'm like that's actually like the one side of the rim. And then you don't really understand how big this thing is until you walk around. The way they built the museum, when you walk out of the museum and you come around the side – and you look at it, it's right in front of your, like, you go from not seeing Meteor Crater to you around the corner, and boom, it's right in your face. And it's just an amazing, awesome sight to behold, because you realize, wow. That's why I said to you, dude, if a meteor is going to hit the Earth, <laughs> if another planet is going <laughs> to come in, what are you going to do about it, dude? Go hide, in, go ahead, go hide in your bunker. <laughs> uh, I'd be like, uh, Mrs. Joseph, come here. Exactly. Panic sex. Yeah, panic sex time. Mm -hmm. 99 <laughs> in the chat, folks. 99. I'm just wanting to tell you that. I'm monitoring the situation here. We're almost there. Let's get that Kev's magic number of 100. Did we get the magic woo 100. We will right. go into the some magic woo at the 100 mark. I think that should be definitely yeah. person. What do you reckon, Popeye? Some Chittahuri or something like that? Or fallback subject? You <laughs> fall. Fallback shit. Well, uh, Why is you know, that always the fallback subject? Like, because I'm trying to take over from David Icke, man. We don't even have to go gotcha, to Roger. I can answer Joe's question before. This will probably bring at least one or two more people in the chat room. Sure, go ahead. You, you asked me if we were at the park if someone fell off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the off, of, off of what? Uh, off of what specifically? The Grand Canyon. Uh, uh, so <laughs> there, there basically was not much hope. Uh, dude, no. They found the body, then I think they located it a couple hours later, and then they recovered it the next oh, day. It's probably Dude, like yeah. roast beef. Oh, well, the, no, no. The weird, the, well, I don't want to say weird, but whatever. The interesting part, whatever, was that we were standing there, and we were, you know, I had already, uh, we, we hiked along this two mile long section of the ridge where we, we, we spread Marseille's ashes out, and then we went, we drove about 20 miles over to where there was this, um, this look at like this tower and then we I put her ashes in three specific spots along by where the tower was at sunset and <clears throat> it was really peaceful really serene and everything but while we were there there was these guys and it wasn't just them it was other people too walking out onto these like rocky outcroppings and I'm like dude like you just have a death wish we were and we were joking amongst ourselves like Darwin award winners right so as we're joking amongst ourselves that they're doing this, and I mean, when I say like the Rocky, you saw the pictures I sent you, right? Okay, walking out onto things like like there's like a three or four thousand foot drop below them. But hey, who cares about that? <laughs> you know, like who cares about falling all the all that way down or however <laughs> far it is, even if it's only a couple hundred feet in some spots. Like, doesn't matter. You're gonna die. Does it matter at that point? It's all yeah. trivial at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, after like ten feet, you're dead. So you know. It's it's just really you're not going to survive. There's signs. There's I brought this up when I did the road trip show the other night. Yeah, uh, I it's kind of funny that the government wants to be your nanny, right, and tell you 
like what to do, what to eat, what to put in your body. We want it, but we want to do it for your safety. But then you go to a government run like park and they don't have railings anywhere near the edge of the Grand Canyon. Their safety thing is a sign that is in like three different, three or four different languages not to, you know, to be careful because you could fall. It should so, just be yeah. common sense. Yeah. But you would know at which you, I get. And they don't put the railing up because hey, they don't mess wanna, up. In. But you I want get the point. Like that. Let the me interrupt you for a second. Be your nanny, and yet they. I want to interrupt they, you. Don't okay. stop it with. Of course, the government wants to be your nanny, and you got to have railings and everything else because everybody's so. No, you know, but you, you see, they want to take personal responsibility at the canyon, but not anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see my point? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know. True. Like, it's you, ridiculous. When you see that, you're like, really, really. I know, really. By the way, uh, 106 in chat right now. Holy s- oh, I believe We're going to to Igor. Number Igor, 100. you were 100 tonight. Yeah, you were 100 tonight, Igor. So uh, congratulations. Well, Igor, uh, virtual if, you want to, if you want to pick some woo and drop it in the chat, let us know. There's been people shouting out about the lights on series, guys. We'll get to that as we carry on with the show. Absolutely jumping in the chat room tonight. I have to thank everyone for tuning in there. Must be you, Popeye. You've brought back a cult with you, man. It's his beard. He brought him back. They wanted to hear me on Freaky Friday. They all hit in his beard. They were castaways or stowaways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. a month on the road. I mean, he probably, he did. He, he looked like a glowing Robinson Caruso when he showed up at my house. <laughs> I, was, I was actually very well trimmed and shaved up and clean for being on no, the I know. And living in my car and out of hotel for weird. a month. So we yes. don't think there's any correlation maybe between asteroids coming for Earth and something like Jade Helm that tie into even the earthquake scenarios, guys? No, not at all. Not in the slightest. I think Dude, that's okay. personally but, but can we, reaching, but, you know, that's me. But, I mean, can we at least uh, agree, even for those that, you know, may say, well, you know, Jade Helm's just an exercise. Can we at, not, at least not be uh, just sit on our laurels because... Hasn't there been an exercise every time there's been an incident, you know? Okay, so shouldn't that alone make us feel a little on edge, perhaps? What about the fact that Colorado is pulling out because Northcom and NORAD were not in the loop on the training of Jade Helm? I mean, that to me is a pretty glaring. We're talking about the head of DHS, right? NORAD's been in charge of DHS since 2002. Uh, they're pretty much in charge of every single bad thing that could happen here. And they just pulled out of Jade Helm completely just on Friday or uh, whatever, North two days ago. Com? Northcom didn't know. And Northcom, then who was participating in it? it North- that's exactly oh. it. It makes you wonder if uh, Mr. Fulford has, uh, has a little bit of a point. Are we going to see a bunch of uh, white dragon ninjas appearing oh, on the scene that. all of a sudden? Don't give him <laughs> excellent. You went Fulford. Do not give him any credit. That guy is about as credible as Wikipedia. You know how I feel about <laughs> right. I'll t- I've got some woo for you guys talking about Wikipedia nice. and things like that. Google Maps. There's something going on with Google Maps. Well, I heard today. if you Google your name, it goes right to CERN. Well, Isn't I have to thank Rebecca Roth for this one. She sent me a video today, and it was Dutch since. Now he was highlighting the fact that. There's a bit of a glitch happening, folks. It's quite a security issue, really, when you think about it for some people. Because what's happening is, if you actually have a YouTube account, a channel, and you go to Google Apps, uh, Google Maps or Google Earth, and then just type in one word, the name of your channel. Now, I've got a video up. I'll drop it in the chat in a moment. But get this, guys. It takes me right to the main LHC at CERN. As is does that- Dutch Sense and another couple of YouTubers as well. Now, here's the really worrying part, though. Professor Doom over on YouTube, when you put his one in, it actually gives you his home address and the cell phone number that he used to verify his YouTube account. But why does wow. that surprise you? No, YouTube not- is owned by Google. Google's nothing more than a huge database. It's not so much a surprise. It's the fact the security issues involved here, Popeye, and the strangeness oh, okay. of the I'm fact sure that people are getting thrown to CERN. I'm sure they'll fix it. First of all, <laughs> CERN, CERN, the, the CERN thing in and of itself is interesting, but of course, I'm, I'm, I, I guess you talk about CERN so much because you're a CERN tart. I would expect that your address would actually be at CERN now. So that's the conspiracy. Kev runs CERN. That's why he talks about it so much. He's trying to put out disinformation. <laughs> Just <laughs> Google where he uploads his shows from. Look, it says CERN. 
<laughs> oh my god, I can see the I can see the YouTube videos already uh, attacking you. And by the way, when I say CERN-tard, or if I say anything with the word tard at the end, it's actually meant like it's not like a pejorative. It's just like a little nickname thing. I'm look, I'm a I'm a conspiracy tard, so it's fine. It's a term okay. of endearment, really. Yes, it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> just saying, I don't want anybody being like. I can just picture now people be sending in emails. Popeye said CERN-tard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that we're all CERN tards at this point, at least myself and Kevin and Joe, because this is it's such a prevalent issue right now with everything that's going on. And we really don't understand what they're trying to do and what the full capacity of that thing actually is. And, you know, Kev brings up the point of them sucking in a, you know, a Ferris big hunk of metal from out of space. It doesn't make a lot of, you know, doesn't it seems pretty plausible that that could actually but, happen. You know, they could actually do it without meaning to do it. You know, I mean, these people yeah. aren't. Yeah, of course, a hot dog wrapper or something like in like a <laughs> yeah. yeah, oops, from like 1983. They're like, oh damn, you know, John's <laughs> hot wrapper from 15 years ago is still in here. Hey, well done, guys. Thank you uh, yeah, for well, having everything so on. Spe- I'm so sorry. <laughs> Seriously, like, who's running things over there? The Marx Brothers? Yeah, I mean, hey. There's been some good stuff that come out of CERN, right? Has there? I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> their little, uh, their little uh, dance thing was pretty neat, but I don't know if I'd call it a good thing, you know? No. Yeah. Yeah. Artistic, maybe. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I worry about these guys, man. I really do, because they, they, they don't seem to have a good handle on what actually could happen with what they're doing. And like you said, you know, maybe they didn't mean to do it or maybe they don't mean to do it, but that's not going to stop it from happening. So, well, you know, again, again, looking back to like when they lit off the Trinity test, half of the sci- at least half of the scientists thought they were either going to like split the earth in half or ignite the entire earth atmosphere. And they went, screw it. <laughs> like, that's the scary part. Okay. It's not so much like, the science isn't scary. I understand. Okay, fine. This could happen if you do A and B. C could happen. What's scary is the people that go, well, you know, maybe we should just do it anyway. But we could end all life. Well, you yeah. know, we should still try. What? What? No. See, and this is the thing. With CERN, I think everything's so compartmentalized that only the people at the top of the structure actually know what the whole picture is. But everybody else is just running these experiments, their own experiments, or they have their own niche thing that they do. You know? Check and this I just one out, guys. Sorry, I, Joe, but this is got? quite interesting. PRC in the chat room. He's typed in Jade Helm into Google Maps, and it's come back in the results. He received Pantex plant, which, what is the Pantex plant, he says? And it says, quick facts, Pantex plant is the United States only nuclear weapons assembly and disassembly facility and is charged with maintaining the safety, security and reliability of the nation's nuclear weapon stockpile. Now, I was thinking that this Google Maps glitch was kind of tied to the tags that I'd been using in YouTube videos and stuff like that. But I don't think anyone has been tagging Jade Helm videos with Pantex Plant. No! I, uh... Can't t- that's the first I've ever actually heard that. I've never so, heard no, of that I, facility at all. Right. Yeah. Mm-mm, no, that's interesting that that came up when um, when he searched that on the Google Maps. I, I, found it, I found it very interesting. One, well, you know, you you having like CERN as your home address is kind of interesting too. Makes me wonder if it's not an op. It's not me. It's Quantum Kev that lives there. Oh, oh, pardon. Yeah, come on, get it right. Prices, Kev. I had to tuck him away, so I gave but, birth to Quantum Kev. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't I think Crisis Kev away. He's on holiday with the Sasquatch. You Popeye. gave birth to Quantum <laughs> Kev. Oh yeah, my birth goodness! Him. I had birth him. He's got three strands of DNA, and one of them is made up of nano diamonds. Get that? Nano diamonds and gold. Oh my God, the Anunnaki uh, are going to come mine you. The other Dude. strand is made of gin. And the other strand is made of juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Welcome to the show, Quantum Kev. You know, the chat room, they're missing Crisis Kev. Even I miss Crisis Kev. He was some character. 
Yes, I, I, I miss hanging out with Crisis Kev. Ah, the joys, boys. Quantum Kev's far much more fun for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, man. 111 in the chat. I can't believe this, it guys. That's a great night tonight. And uh, in hour number two, guys, I want to get into one of the reasons why, well, some of the reasons why. Let's discuss why they may be spraying. You know, I, I haven't heard anybody really discuss that in quite a while. Joe, you're quite controversial from the wee snippet I was taking from you before the show. You're going to go against the grain here, man. I almost Little suggest bit. these guys are doing it for our own good. That, that's right. I'm just going to pose an alternate point of view. You can pose the alternate point of view all you want. It's still full <sighs> of crap. Yeah, well, of dude. course it's full of crap, but I still got to do it. Beneficial so tard. It, it, Joe likes the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's a beneficial tart. He likes the. He likes to play the. He's the devil's advocate. Tart. I, I am, but it's okay. only it's only just to to get the conversation going. And I think yeah. you know Johnny whistles. I'm sure he's firing up the whistle bot right now, and he's going to predict. Bot. He's going to predict the next volcano and big earthquake. I can feel okay, it. Okay, so tonight, tonight, fun Bruh. Freaky Friday, a record-setting Freaky Friday, the whistle bot. Makes an appearance. That's right. Damn guys, I mean this is great. This is this is awesome. Hey, I also got the Google car. Don't forget that we got to talk about the Google car. It's not a Google car. It's a koala car. I mean, it's koala on wheels. Is that the thing that drives itself around and crashes into people? Yes. And then and then also they're genetically modifying chickens into your Raptor. velociraptor uh, named Freedom. I well, I well, see. They can't see mine. I had to travel back. I had to what CERN opened up an interdimensional porthole the last time, and I got freedom because of it. it in case the <laughs> listeners, I have an interdimensional traveling velociraptor named Freedom. There's well, that. they're taking a shortcut yeah. now, and they're just transforming chickens into freedom. Freedom is going to be pissed off, and she is going to eat the mutant GMO chickens. She doesn't like that. But if they manage to curl all these dimensions into one with that super collider and things like the raptors can fly out of there, time travelers from the future, a tunnel of ma- just madness coming out of that portal. Picture and that. the Berenstain and the Berenstein bears. Yeah, they'll be coming too. That's, That's right. I'm telling you that was a test. <laughs> yeah, let's That's just a- let's just let's just open up interdimensional portals and bring through demons and and alien dinosaurs. That's good to be, man. The uh, park? That'll be the music thing, guys. So, it's listen, I, folks, don't go anywhere. We will be back after these short messages. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth frequency radio. Welcome back to our number two right here on Freaky Friday. I'm joined tonight by Johnny Whistles. Joe Joseph, J.D. Moore of the Red Pill Report, and the one and only Popeye from Federal Jack down the rabbit hole. Now, I was supposed to bring the show back in the voice of Dabu, so eyes open. (laughs) (laughs) Killuminati. Thank you so much. Ears open. (laughs) Nah, come on, Dabu does some good work, guy. It's not Dallas Boo. (laughs) (laughs) Ears open. Ears open. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god no, I reckon you're going to be up for I reckon you're going to be up for some Dallas boo After your next theory Joe Tell us, is Rockefeller and Rothschild And Bill Gates and all the rest of them Really looking after oh, us yeah. okay, so it all Please wrong? Hear the advocate tard Please so, so here you go So what if <laughs> What if Instead of Chemtrails and All of this making like a plasma Like atmosphere uh, so they can do their mind control and their earthquakes and now all that kind of good stuff. You know, everything that chemtrails do and, and the harp and stuff. What if, because of the sun shutting down, you know, all of a sudden all these earthquakes are coming and they say, oh, our magnetic, fi- our magnetic shield is weakening. So we need to fly and make sure that we can just, just enough. We'll get like 20% shine the, those cosmic rays back into the into, into space, just enough to save the planet and humanity. Huh? Yeah, because huh? they want to save us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
because they're psychopaths, their, Joe. <laughs> because all of their behavior <laughs> up to the point. fact that, you know, Georgia Guidestones and 90% population reduction. Come on. Never mind that. All that aside. Come on. Never mind Is it Maurice possible? Strong, who was introduced to the UN by the Rockefeller Foundation, right? First guy to introduce the idea of carbon taxes back in the 19, I think, what, late 1970s? Guy who has no country, lives in Hong Kong in a controlled district now uh, because you know nobody wants him, building right? building came from? Do you know where the land the UN building sits on came from? Mm-mm. It was donated by the Rockefellers. Do you know what was on the UN, the land that the UN building sits on before they built the UN there? A slaughterhouse. No. How appropriate. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty appropriate, mm-hmm. yeah. How appropriate. Hmm. <sighs> How about the big, uh, you know, taking over the world meeting that the UN is going to have here in September? Pretty, uh, another, another September date coming and up. And you've got the Pope going there as well, JD, in September. That the guy. The White House. The Pope. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah, don't even get me started with that guy. Well, he's the dude that's kind of laying the groundwork for almost Project Bluebeam, or dare I say it, a real encounter with some space beings. He keeps on talking about our alien brothers, how they'll baptize them. I don't know what he's kind of playing at, guys, but Lucifer devices, planets he's, coming in. He's, yeah. he's good at getting people, because like people that don't like the Pope and stuff in the past that I know are like, well, this guy's actually a pretty good Pope. And I'm like, wait, what? Did you just like, <laughs> say what I think I heard you just say? So he's and, like, yo, yeah, whoa, 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 what, 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 what'd you say? Well, exactly. That's exactly what happens. And I, I think that this guy, look, Ratzinger was just evil. I mean, he looked oh, like dude. he looked like the Sith Lord. He looked like, yeah, he's like yeah, he was, I get he your was, children for breakfast. He, he, with his white robe, and I'm like, dude, he needs a black robe with the hood on, and he needs to be talking to Darth Vader. Vader. Can we give this really, really, you know, one credit, need- though, Joe? Can we give him one bit of credit? He has recognized the state of Palestine. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've been seeing people on Facebook actually hey, having I- a go at him for that. Uh, uh, and how many times have I told you a broken clock is right twice a day? Remember that. <laughs> I mean, eventually he might get one thing right, okay? Well, remember, eventually, he, he, if you're trying to, like, if you're trying to get everybody on board for your, your one world religion, your whatever one world, you know, follow us, we promise we'll lead you into the new, the new age, you know, we promise we're, we, we're good shepherds. If you want everybody to pay attention to you, then you have to touch on everything that yeah. means something to everyone. You have to be able to baffle everybody with bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. And that guy is a pro. Oh, dude, he, he, he is a pro. No doubt about it. And it's funny because really in reality, I'll bet you Ratzinger is in half as, as uh, rotten as this guy is. Well, do you know, right. he actually wanted to be an astrobiologist before he went into the actual paper. Well, the actual. Isn't that company. interesting? Yeah, exactly. And it was him that picked the leading um, Vatican astronomer just now. It was him that actually handpicked the guy. And he's rumored, just a rumor, I heard Tom Horn speaking about this, that he has visited the actual Mount Graham site where the Lucifer device is. Now, that suggests to me, guys, that whatever they are looking for, they can now see. Because I don't think he would just turn up there for, well, this is a telescope. Dude, the, it's so much more than a telescope. The fact <laughs> aimed at Lucifer. It's not, though. That's the problem. It's like they, they really jumped through their butts yeah, to they did. come up with that acronym, dude. <laughs> you you know, know, that's the way to make it is what you're saying. No, I know what you exactly. mean. Exactly. No, it's, you know, it's like any other military acronym. Sometimes they sound like, but, but even so, that is symbolic enough for them to say, oh, that must be the Lucifer telescope. Yeah, that's a Lucifer. See it? How do you see that? But okay, Roger, it, that's enough said, you know? And, and so why is it that they have the most powerful telescope ever made? It's even more powerful than the Hubble telescope. Why do they make it? And then they build it on top of an ancient Stargate site. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, though. I'm I mean, sure that has nothing to do with anything. in Arizona? What? Look, I'm sure that has nothing to do with anything, you know. Although, normally people, like, set up stuff in their house close to, like, where the cable jack is or close to where, like, the 
ele- electrical sockets are, but I'm sure that's just a coincidence too and has nothing one has nothing to do with the other, right? Yeah, right. Just I'm just saying. And by the I way, mean, seriously, being out in Arizona, yeah, New Mexico, it's very um it there, there's a there's an energy out there like it's I don't know how else to put it. There's like this natural energy out there. If Christina were on here with us, she'd be able to to back me up on this. I know it's powerful to look out at the Grand Canyon, but not only that, it's just that whole area has this, like, I don't know, very ancient, I want to say ancient mystical type energy. And it might, if I say mystical, it might sound like fairies and stuff. I don't mean it like that. It's just, you know what I mean. You guys, the Woo crew knows what I mean, but Mm -hmm. it's like this ancient energy that you can feel out there. So I kind of understand, like, being out there again, because the last time I was out there was about 18 years ago. Being out there again, I re- like I can remember feeling that energy the first time too, and I, I get why they would want to open things out there. You know what I mean? I understand why there's a lot of sacred sites out there for the Hopi and the other native tribes that are out there. I get it. And Pop, I think of all the people that flock all the time to places like Sedona. That's also rumored to be one of the natural. That was right around the corner from where we were. That's, there you yeah. go. I mean, you find these places all over the planet, guys. And I'm wondering if it's maybe the part of space that we're moving into or whether it's just time that all these locations are now starting to become active again. Am I hearing the Johnny bot? Wow, Johnny, is that, what are we? It's the Johnny bot. Oh, oh, guys, guys, guys. Listen to this. You'll like this. From 2020, airplanes will only be able to travel by air. <laughs> oh, that is very deep, vague, John. Dude. Very vague. Oh, but deep. I, I, I definitely get the message there. Yep. Boy, oh, the, the boy, the whistle bot, man. I mean, it's it's spot on every time. Yeah. What about the earthquakes, John? Are we due a big one? Is there one coming? No, Kev. No earthquakes. None. We're not getting any. We're in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get a free pass now we've got Dude. nazi government oh yeah you have to deal with the royals so yeah probably so we so, have our own problems don't get me wrong earthquakes are afraid of the royal family is that what you're saying basically yeah. they're saying that the <laughs> reptilian blood overrides earthquakes earthquakes are like romans they stop at hadrian's wall <laughs> <laughs> Because me and Whistles are the watchmen on the wall. Oh, my God. It's not enough to scare anyone, folks. Watch. Hey, by the way, Lucifer uh, stands for Large Binocular Telescope Near Infrared Utility with Camera and Integral Field Unit for Extragalactic Research. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't even come close to standing for that. But I'm just oh. saying that's what it stands well. for. Joe, get this. You're going to love this. There's a new uh, program. You know I love my TV shows, right? New show starting this year, and it is called, and the hero of the program... I've been waiting for you to bring this up, too. Lucifer! <laughs> I've been waiting for Kev does to it, bring does this it, up. I mean, come on. At this point, do we need any more, uh, like, whoosh, slaps upside the head? You know? Oh, look, you know, here I am. I'm asleep at the wheel, because... Uh, you know, I've already got that. Uh, I've already got that. So, do we need any more upside the head? You know. <laughs> what do you think? Will we listen to the trailer? Will we see how wooey this is? Come on, dude, bring I'd it. I'd like to. Yeah, uh, I've wait, never heard of this show. Two guys, because usually I leave the stream on at this point and I kill everyone. But no, it's <laughs> off. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, all right, here we go, guys. People like to tell me things. There's deep, dark, naughty little desires that are on their mind. And you're not burying this human stain because you're actually in love with him, right? Oh, God, no. No. Oh, my. I can't believe I just said that. Must be something about his face. Hey, boss. Remember me? Can I have your autograph? Did I sell my soul to the devil? So the devil made you do it, did he? The alcohol and the drugs, the top to selfies. The choices are on you, my dear. Pull yourself together. <laughs> Any 
This is Lucifer Morningstar. Is that a uh, stage name? God given, I'm afraid. Why don't you tell me something? How does she end up dying in a hailstorm of bullets and you get away without a scratch? The benefits of immortality. What will your corrupt little organization do about this? We're done here. Someone out there needs to be punished. Stop caring. You're the devil. I think you have a visitor. Men is ill. Your return to the underworld has been requested. Let me just uh, check my calendar. Here it is. The 7th of never through to the 15th of ain't gonna happen. How does that work for you guys? <laughs> Try it. I think father's upset now. He will not be merciful for much longer. We should be out there punishing those responsible. Come on, I'll help you. How could you possibly help me? I have the ability to draw out people's forbidden desires. You're psychic or something? No, I can't read people's minds. I'm not a Jedi. Watch and learn, okay? You're thinking about it, aren't you? Do you two know each other? No, no, but I know that look. So I wouldn't recommend it. I'm like walking heroin, very habit-forming. It never ends well. I do yoga. Hot yoga. What did you do to her? Did she roofie her? <laughs> what exactly do you think happens when the devil leaves hell? All of those demons, all of those tormented and tortured souls, where do you think they go? You seem oddly immune to my charms. Referring to them as charms, I think, is a bit of a stretch. Did my father send you? What's your name? Lucifer. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's one wow. I am definitely going to be tuning into. You know? oh. oh, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> all, I, <laughs> all I could say is that's very fitting considering where CERN is right now, you know, and what, the, uh, what they're going to be doing here in... Uh, Oh, the next four or five months. Joe, why are you dressed up in weird garb dancing around in front of the CERN? My floor? assless chaps. <laughs> Goat hair assless chaps. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Stupid CERN. So, why do so, they have to mess with this stuff? So Can't they just leave this alone? It's the same story told over and over again. It's nothing new, you know. It's the I same know. story. Lucifer, the morning star, right? He can't, he's, he's here on Earth. He's being requested to be, be brought back into the underworld, but he's here on Earth to help mankind. That's the underlying basic message, and then everything else from the rest of the crap will spawn off from there. But that's the basic message, and it's the same story being told over and over and over again, and that's what they do with all of their stories. Yeah. It's Isn't the it basic few so stories retold. Yeah. And rehashed every ten to fifteen years. That's what there's another one on stuff? just now as well called the Messengers, and there are seven angels that have been sent by God to take on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And funnily enough, the first one has been dealt with, and he's an Arab gentleman. So mm. there you go. Go watch the old movie with uh, Connery and uh, Michael Caine, the man who would be king, and then go watch Stargate. And I actually have a video up on Federal Jack uh, about this. A guy did a documentary on YouTube, and I actually featured it as an article <clears throat> on Federal Jack about two years ago. He's you know, right on point. No, it's, it's right on point. It, it's the same story, same basic few stories told over and over and over again. And that's oh, what right. they're this. This is just based, the basic story is, look, Lucifer's here. He's supposed to be in the underworld. You get it? Your father is not happy with you. So God cast him out, right? But instead, he's here on earth. He is here. To, quote, unquote, he, he, help humans. Yeah. Right. And I'm not getting all religious and, and picking a side or take, saying this or that. I'm just yeah. saying it's the same base. You don't even have to believe in religion to understand that this is the same basic story that they're retelling you. So Absolutely. why do they keep retelling you the same story? over and over and over again. And it goes further than the Bible and Christianity and stuff because this, the, the mystery schools and all that predate all of that. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand where the mystery schools go, the stuff Bill Cooper talked about. You have to understand ancient Sumer. You got to understand the stories of the Anunnaki because all of this connects. It's not oh, yeah, just... It's, like a big, it's a big mosaic, dude. Yes, I mean, a really, huge yeah. puzzle. It, well, mm -hmm. I, I, 
I, I, I liken it to a Rembrandt painting. If you've yeah. ever seen a Rembrandt painting in person, pictures don't do them justice because they're the size of a wall. If you ever get a chance to go over uh, to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, I suggest you go and go check it out. You know, Rembrandt, Pope, I always mix, enormous. always mix him up with Van Gogh. Van Gogh was the one that was worried in case Dallas Goldbug busted him, so he cut his own ears off. Exactly. Well, his, they have a Van Gogh museum over there, too, so you can see his stuff. But if you go to the Reichs Museum and you see Rembrandt's paintings, you, you, you can see details if you look up close. And this is why I like to use his paintings as a, like a visual metaphor. Because you can get up close and you can see how detailed his paintings were. And it's amazing, especially considering how long ago they were, they, he painted it and the materials that they had to use back in the day. But in order to take in the painting in its full grandness and to understand the entirety of the painting itself and the meaning of it, one has to step back 15, 20, 30 feet to see how vast and how grand it really is. And the conspiracy that's being woven or that has been woven is the exact same thing. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. It's a big mosaic. It's all, all a big picture that you kind of have to put together over time. And you can't, you can't just have one source. You can't have tunnel vision. It's like, it's like, like I was bringing up chemtrails earlier, you know? <clears throat> you can't just look at those with tunnel vision. You have to look at all the scenarios, all the possibilities, because to do anything otherwise is irresponsible and you don't get the big picture, you know? And it just kind of explodes from there. Because as you go down that road, you find out about three other things. And then those three things lead to six. <laughs> and it just keeps going. Well, that's why the pejorative of conspiracy theorists was used back after the Kennedy assassination. Because yeah. it didn't matter. There was a lot of disinfo out there. But they had to label anything outside of a lone gunman as a, con as a crazy, kooky conspiracy. And the people that you know had any evidence as pushing lies and garbage because even if you looked down and this this is this happens to this day if you look at the kennedy assassination and this is like a, a good example of it if you look at it no matter what angle even if it's one of these disinfo angles oh the russians did it you will stumble upon real truthful information that fact so it doesn't yeah. matter even if you go down a wrong path there's so much information out there that points to it that you're going to stumble across it. And they knew that because there's a chance that you could follow that real information back to a real lead and then follow that to wherever it goes. So everybody clear across the board had to be a nutbag. Yeah. Did how about this info or not? How about this? My brother just uh, <laughs> comes up with it. He goes, I've got the next chemtrail documentary title. 50 shades of spray. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> that is pretty clever. That I'm, is pretty I'm, clever. I'm stealing it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. I mean, that is that. Uh, hats off to you, Greg, because that was really good, dude. It's almost but, as good uh, as my paranormal show, Ghost But it's ghost. true. It is 50 Shades of Spray, you know, because it's not just one thing. And it's it all comes good, Joe, according to you. We're all right. May well, I? Well, you know, for, well, I have to play, but you have to play devil's advocate May here I? because no, could, that be, could that be one of those shades? No, listen to me. They geoengineering is a tool, okay? It's like a hammer. It's not evil. The act of doing it is not bad because they can make it rain in the desert where people don't have any water. And believe me, you'd have a lot less pissed off people willing to join terrorist groups if they had clean water and they weren't watching their families die. I'm not saying that's the only reason. Absolutely, no, but just wait. It yeah. You know, there's there certain things that would stop them because they'd be like, I don't well, Why would I go do that? That doesn't benefit me. I have water. I have this. I have all the things I need. See, si simple, basic human needs. Anyway, they can make it rain in the desert with geoengineering. So geoengineering itself isn't bad. It's like a hammer. It's what you do with it. So if I if I if I build a house and I help homeless people get off the street with my hammer, right, because I built them a house. Well, I'm doing good. But if I take that same hammer and I beat one of those homeless people to death with it, well, then that's not good. You see how that works? It's a tool. What they're doing, though, is evil. They're terraforming the planet, and you have to wonder why. They're, they're, I honestly think they're the ones that are creating this man-made global warming. So when people, and Mike Murphy and I have talked about this, when people say, oh, global warming is man-made, I'm like, well, okay, to a certain extent, yeah, 
if they weren't. So spraying. what you're saying then, what you're saying then is they're basically turning the earth into a giant jiffy pop popper. Uh, they're basically well, putting kind of like a layer of tin foil over the over that tin foil pan that inside had that popcorn with the oil. What is put on the stove? Remember that? <laughs> well, have you noticed since like I mean they they they're, they've been spraying since like the mid to late nineties is when they started spraying, but oh, even before that. But Even since, before that, yeah, yeah. But since they started pushing this this global warming agenda, have you noticed that they've started spraying more and more and more and more and more? Honestly, I think they're trying to. They're you know, oh, look, you know, just like we say about other things, they try to create the physical meme. Well, that's what they're doing with this, because the Earth isn't playing their global warming game. How, by the way, I, anybody really thinks? Like, I understand there are some good minded and good willed people out there that want to like save the Earth from. You know, destruction, they really buy into this. But how in the world do you actually believe that paying taxes to Al Gore and making him rich beyond what he already is, okay, and a bunch of other douchebag rich a holes that don't care about any of us, how does making these people richer stop pollution or stop global warming or stop damaging the earth? Because these companies are still allowed to pollute, they just give a little bit of money. So explain to me how that's cool. Explain to me how I should be on board with that. That's not a solution. That's a scam. See, it I'm a scam. real world solutions, not lies. So oh, I'm no, not there's, fixing there's the no doubt. No, there's no doubt, dude. I, I don't I don't for a second think that they have our intentions. But I pose that because that could be an argument that you hear one day when um things get worse. And and they will that's get what, worse. No, that's what they're saying now. I've talked right. to Mike Murphy about this. The the excuse they're coming out with now is they're fighting global warming. So they're spraying. That's they, they admit to spraying uh, aluminum into the sky. And when you ask them, why would you spray aluminum particles into the sky? These geoengineers say, well, it, it, it's, they say it's either been theorized and then sometimes it's been admitted that they've done it. Okay. Obviously they're doing it, but their excuse is always the same. To combat global warming. We're saving mankind. Don't you understand? We have to spray. That's why they're digitally re-adding in all these digitally remade movies from like the 90s and the 80s. They're adding chemtrails. Everard spotted this. I noticed this a while ago, but I thought I was kind of crazy. And a couple of other people had mentioned it. And then, you know, they get bombarded. But Everard did a really good job uh, on Facebook. And I don't know if he did a show about it or not, but he pointed this out. You know, Chris kept pointing out that, look... Go look at watch these old movies on VHS and then go back and look at the digitally remastered ones. They're adding chemtrails into these movies so that because people are we've said, well, go back and look at older videos or go back and look at pictures. And most people aren't going to go look at their own pictures. Many people don't even have pictures before digital cameras. People didn't, you know, they might have 35 millimeter film rolling around, but they're not going to go pay to get it uh, developed. Right. Or they might have lost all that stuff. So they'll depend on going to modern uh, regular mainstream movies and stuff. And when they do, they're going to see these chemtrails added and go, oh, these conspiratorial chemtrails. Of course, are- dude. Remember, it, like, uh, Cars, that was one. Um, Short Circuit. The movie Short Circuit had chemtrails in it. That was, like, 19... Uh, early 90s, late 80s, around there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're right, that conditioning has been there. But it's funny because... If you talk to anybody that's, you know, was around when jets first started, you know, jetliners, 707s, um, they'll tell you. We don't remember ever seeing anything like that. You know, very interesting. Wow, we're already at the break. Phoenix is going to be joining us at the break. And I think Nano, Nano's coming on as well, isn't, isn't she, Kev? Oh, the very one and only. I mean, this is feminine. Better. So make sure you stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Freaky Friday. Real people. Real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. May 15th, 2015. Freaky Friday here on Truth Frequency. Wow, it feels good to be back on air. First full week back on air after about four and a half weeks off. Ah, got to stretch out here. There's not much room here, though. There's a ton of people. I'm hanging out with Kev, 
JD, Joe, and now the one, the only, Nano Girl. Everybody, give her a big round of applause. Hi, Nano. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Nano. Uh, 9.8. Hey. So uh, you got your, you got your uh, life preserver? <laughs> I'm just That's asking because, you know, you, got my, you don't want to go blub blub. Hey, J.J. Abrams put us in the movie. <laughs> There's the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. It's all golden. It's all good. The guy's in the know. <laughs> That's he awesome. definitely is in the know. Yes, the hell with May 28th. Oh. All I got to say is the amount of times that bridge has been destroyed in movies, if I ever get a chance to see it again in real life, I'll be surprised if it's still there. I'll be like, no, well, do you think Lucifer there? Morningstar might take it out in the hit show? You know, no, he'll save Morningstar, it. Golden Gates. He couldn't make that stuff up. He, he'll save it. It's totally, it, you guys were safe. First of all, we got the tech here, right? This is Obama's versatiller. He's his favorite place to come. He comes two or three times a year. It's not going to happen. Nuh uh. Uh uh. Safe. As long as JJ puts it in the movie, it's all good. Well, Nano, we were discussing earlier on all the uptick in the volcanoes and the fact that the only place that hasn't really released any pressure yet, is California. <laughs> now, you look at these things as well, but what do you think is causing the volcanoes at this time, away from California right now? You know, you, you, you've you asked me that a couple of times, and, and I we've got CERN going on, we've got chemtrails, God knows what that's doing. We have all of the stuff that's gone on um, <clears throat> with the uh, oil spills in Louisiana, you know, that whole mess. We've kind of done some damage to the planet. Um, I do think we're going through some growth spurts as well. But I don't, I just don't subscribe to the earthquake predictions. The really sad thing is a lot of these, I think, have been created, you know, by CERN or by, by HARP yeah. or by, by yeah, things man like that. Yes, yeah. yes. Could very yes. well be. I mean, there's no doubt. Phoenix, how you doing, hey, man? Hey, what's up? Have here. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Thanks, guys. You know, these guys were trying to get me in during the break. And to all of our listeners, you have to be smarter in your equipment. They're like pressing buttons and stuff like get in, get in. I'm like not connecting up. I'm like getting something to drink, doing whatever, running around with students. How are you guys doing? What the hell are you guys doing with like 100 plus people in the chat room? What is going on on TFR? What are you guys doing? That's, that's the interesting thing is um, we are just doing what we normally do, which is unwind on a Friday night. Ah, and it feels all right. So, uh, yeah, very- but we're talking about um, uh, these earthquakes, the upticks. That's kind of how we started off the, uh, the broadcast. And then, uh, of course, Nano joined the broadcast. She's uh, on the West Coast. And I asked her, did, does she have a life preserver handy when that 9.8 comes along and just totally takes out California into the ocean, <clears throat> sp- sploosh, and she's swimming along. And you know mm-hmm. what, Nano? I, I give a lot of, I give a lot of um, validity based on my research on the expanding Earth idea because um, it just fits. And then, you know, Kev, you brought up that, that piece that, and mind you, it is before it's news. But it's a it's a really good before it's news um, uh, piece on uh, what's it called the the earthquake revealed that hidden land beneath Asia, five hundred and sixty miles below ground. You know how they had this um, these caverns, these deep caverns underneath underneath Asia and Europe. It's nuts. It's basically not the way that it were sold. You know it's. I don't think it's like tectonics and magma and outer core and inner core. I think it's a little bit different. I got to be honest with you. And now these uh, complex sonar uh, and radar pictures that they're be that that they can build, you know, really show something totally different. What do you guys think about that? Can I say something, Joe? Absolutely. I agree with you. The expando planet. Uh, the expanding planet theory, I really believe. Uh, because 
If you look, you know, they show us in grade school when you're young how the the continents fit together and allegedly they drifted apart. Yeah, they drifted apart because it expanded apart. I really believe in the expanding planet theory. I, I think that's correct. We're building magma. magma. I think the, the energetics that come in from wherever, uh, the sun from the center of our galaxy – that uh, excite the core of our planet, the neutro, the neutrinos are, are uh, changing or whatever, like from the movie 2012, right? 2012. I, I think that's real. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, what, uh, Kev, are you there? I mean, seriously, this is, this is another example of Hollywood. Hollywood doing its thing, you know? Well, wasn't didn't Anthony Patch come on and say that they were yeah. creating the strange lits, which were basically the neutrinos at the CERN, and that they were okay. diving down into the center? And they of the dive earth down and... to the core, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That's where they collect. But, but whoa, 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 they... whoa, 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 whoa! What did JD just say? What did you just say? <laughs> we, had, we had Anthony Patch on a couple of weeks ago, and he is a—I yeah. mean, we're talking deep, deep, like, deep into CERN deep research, CERN brother. Researcher, yeah. And he's talking about the strangelets that are being created there, and he likens those. Is it the strangelets? We had to get Kev back on here. I know he had to go grab some coffee or something, but yeah, I don't know if it's the strangelets were neutrinos or if they were kind of uh, you know uh, complementary types of things. But yeah, he says that they basically dive down they create so much mass that they dive down through the containment system and basically head on down to the center of the earth where his prediction is that sometime between the next 10 and 100 years we're going to turn this planet into a neutrino star or something like that so we've all got that going for us which is nice oh that's a pleasant thought (laughs) what are they doing are these guys insane oh my god yeah it is it's it's bad you know the thing the thing is is that you know there's always that it, it's side effects, right? When, when it comes to medication, human beings, they'll take it. They don't really give a crap about the side effects, not until it affects them or enough people get it to where it gets some sort of publicity. However, most times, you know, the doctor says, hey, take this pill for your asthma or whatever. You don't really give a crap. You think the doctor did his thing. You know, and I'm talking about most of America because that's what they do. They just blindly follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so. Why would this be no different? <laughs> you know, science, don't worry about the side effects. You know, we're, we're trying to uh, open up a black hole. Don't worry about the fact that it could be like, you know, opening the pits of hell. Or Do you remember a crappy movie from like, I think it was the late 90s, early 2000s called Core? Yes. Oh, I just yes. watched yes. that the other day. It was brilliant. Movie. Brilliant okay. movie. Yeah. What was well, the- they took this machine down to the core of the the yeah, try exactly. to the core of the earth and all that. Yeah. Okay. But what but what was what was the reason it comes out that they there was a specific reason that the core stopped spinning? Because they were dicking with a tectonic weapon. Yeah, but it was like harp, uh, Popeye, yeah. wasn't it? Like harp, yeah. something well, like harp. It's kind of, it was kind of like harp. Harp, harp's kind of like become like a meme because that's the only yeah, meme. people right. really know about. It's really called it's scalar technology, and then Lord knows what the hell they have mm-hmm. now. I mean, if we know about it, you can probably bet your ass. I am so computer. glad oh, I, that you brought that up. I uh, make that up. I know extensively about scalar. Well, there you go, Joe. You are you are Mr. Radio Guy. You do know about radio waves. Yeah. By, well, how about like how about things like the Tesla howitzer? You well, know? just so we know, just so we're clear. Remember, you remember oh, yeah. who Bernard Eastland is, Joe. He's the guy that created the patents and sold them to the United States government that they created the harp installation with. He based his patents off of Tesla's work. Well, yeah. Bernard Eastland said. And I think it was you, he even mentioned this in Nick Begich's um, in uh, the Angels Don't Play That uh, This Harp or That Harp, whatever the hell it is. If you go find a, the the first video, there's two of them. But if you go find the first one, uh, he uh, if I remember that was the one where Bernard Eastland was in, and he even said that when the when they first started Harp Up, that's what tore the hole in the ozone layer. Yep, it wasn't. Wow. The- it's an issue. Wow. They also they said started- that you shouldn't fly aircraft within 200 miles of. As well, this is okay. This is hold on the- one, hold on one second, guys. Help me out here and our listeners. What was the guy's name? I'm taking notes here. Bernard Eastland. Yeah, yeah Bernard, Bernard Eastland. He's he's dead now, but he's the guy that created the patents and then sold them to the United States government for uh, Harp, and he yeah. based me- his patents off of uh, Tesla's work. 
let me read this. This is cool. an excerpt out of um, uh, Colonel Tom Bearden, one of his presentations. Um, and, of course, he's retired colonel now. He's an old man. But he worked extensively with this technology, and he writes about the uh, Tesla howitzer. This is just – and this was done in the um, – <laughs> In the 60s and the 70s, and written, he actually wrote about this in 1984. It says, for one thing, there is no delivery of anything to any place. He says, bombs are obsolete. So are the planes to get them there. No helicopters necessary. All current nuclear devices are rendered nearly useless by electronic dudding. All distant destruction can be done from a control room and to any point on Earth. The power of men has just increased by orders of magnitude. The new weapons could even cause storms on the sun. Thus, there is great urgency to make these new facts public and known, with the hope that all nations would come together to ban the use of scalar weapons. It says two mm. scalar antenna, together along with the computers to control them, make up a scalar interferometer. And it says, according to Co Colonel Tom Bearden, the Russians have hundreds of such installations already. These interferometers are called Tesla howitzers, and they can deliver a giant blast of energy to the distant target site, true action at a distance. The first howitzer mode is called the exothermic mode of operation because immense EM energy blasts outward at the target site. The blast of a scalar howitzer can be of near nuclear level in destructiveness and can be repeated easily at that place or nearby or anywhere. The howitzer can use a lesser exothermic power setting and simply destroy all electronics in the target area. Thus, they can render our nuclear missiles inoperable as they sit in their silos by frying the electronic circuits an EMP uh, inside them. It's an EMP blast. Basic, but that's, that's a very low setting, if you will. <laughs> you oh, know, what you I mean? know Joe, what, Joe, let me interject here. Joe, what you're talking sure. about, I read about many, many years ago, and they yeah. actually referenced shooting howitzers or artillery back in time, and they would shoot a shell, a certain uh, a, a type of uh, high-explosive shell, and actually influence events back in history. And they were they were actually inferring that some of the training places and things that they would do these uh, train uh, test shots at uh, that appeared innocuous to the current uh, population were actually directed at ancient or and or future history. Wow, how bizarre is that? That man. is Holy that is cow. that's extremely bizarre. JD, come on, man. Well, I uh, I just went into total listener mode with Phoenix there, man. To be perfectly honest, I uh, I don't remember what I was going to even say. That would that blows my <laughs> mind though. This idea of using uh, scalar weapons through interdimensional time to affect places and things in the past or the future that is mind boggling. So no, I'm 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 out for a second. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's pretty Dude, I read it. I'm sorry, I read it somewhere. And, and dig this, I read it in a military publication, and I think. The subtitle of it was To Kill a Brontosaurus. You know, name. guys, we're living in an inverted world right now, so let's think. There's all these other dimensions, so let's what do you mean speculate. By do you well, mean we're in like a bowl or like a plate? Well, no, I'm just saying we've got these dimensions that CERN are trying to open up, okay? So let's speculate that these other beings on the other side in these other dimensions, they pursue similar tech, stuff like that. What would it look like at this end if they fire up a CERN in the other dimension? Could we have stuff maybe like, oh, I don't know, MH370 disappearing? Uh, exactly. Nano, um, Nano, Na Nano it, I, I gotta, I gotta go to you on this one. I mean, and and chime in on whatever you want to. But what do you think about that? Uh, the CERN in, the, in another dimension, or Absolutely. the fact I mean, that come on, it's, you know. it's, or it's a high tech free for all. <laughs> That, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we're in this time where the answer anybody's going to give us is, "Why did you do that?" Because I could. You know, it's not should I or was that a good idea? It's because I could. I wanted to see what I could do, and I, I mean, I, it's, it's. If it wasn't so scary, and and we saw a lot of the what I think are repercussions from all this craziness. It'd be kind of a fun ride. You and know I wish I we were included. I wish we were included more, Joe. I wish we knew more. 
I wish we I wish they'd announce it. Hey, look, we're going to blow something up with CERN today. Oh, thank you. Here, get I'm, some popcorn. Uh, Nano, I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to get a little I'm going to get a little uh, like quantum Kev on you for a second. OK. And 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 say, isn't it interesting, Nano, how they can now basically if the, if what they're saying is true, you know, that what CERN is actually trying to do is rip a hole in the Higgs field that they can quantify the veil as a Higgs field, meaning they know what particles make it up. I mean, how amazing is that? Well, Joe, that's the thing. It is off the charts amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, when Kev asked me on thir- Tuesday, I thought a lot about the question he asked me. You love all this technology. It's like, oh, God, I do. Yes, I do. I think we all do. I think, I think we're in awe of so much of it. And yet there's no, there's no harness on some of it, and there should be. Or at least, as I said, we should get a vote. You know, it's like, okay, you think we should open up this new dimension? You think we should let these beings in? We're not sure they're there. We think <laughs> they are. What, would you welcome them if they came over? You know, I mean, how about involving us? I know you're not the only one to have these fears. You've had people like... Stephen Hawking's JD, who's been writing letters with Elon Musk and other leading physicists and mathematicians warning about this very machine that they're playing about with right now. Mm -hmm. And now we have the unidentified lying object, which seems to have fallen out of the news cycle. And I was wondering if maybe uh, if maybe Phoenix had heard about that, because that to me seems like a pretty significant development in this whole CERN environment. Before we go to Phoenix, let me just update the listeners. We haven't heard back from Albert de Roque, and that is the actual lead scientist at the CMS at CERN. Funnily enough, guys, he isn't willing to come onto the show and talk about the mystery object with us. What a weenie. What do you make of the mystery object that they are not allowed to observe for quantum reasons, obviously? (sighs) The mystery object. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I know as much about the mystery object as you do. Um, my thoughts on it, I don't know. You know, I, I'm up in the air about it. What do you guys think about well, this? I think it's interesting how we were all speculating that what happened during the first round of experiments, they obviously got the power levels wrong, something didn't work, they went away and done the maths, and now they know what power they need. Well, that first round of experiments, they had something, over 10,000 UFOs turning up in one of the beams. Now, this wasn't unidentified flying objects, it was unidentified falling objects. Now, there was no stability to these objects, and that was one of the words used at the time. However, fast forward to these more powerful energies that they're using, and now we have ULOs, unidentified line objects, that they mm-hmm. can't observe because it will change their state. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something about that. Have you ever seen the movie... Um, oh, it escapes me right now. It, it and basically what it has to do with um, Poltergeist. It's the movie Poltergeist. Are you guys familiar with the movie Poltergeist? Oh, how could you not? It's a classic. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you guys remember the point where they're all down in the living room? They're kind of shocked because things, these bizarre objects start just falling out of nowhere and they land at their feet and they pick them up. They're like ancient, not ancient, but, you know, near ancient, you know, a century or so old uh, watches and buttons and different things like that. You remember that? And they just fall out of nowhere. Yep. Okay. Yeah, basically, the what they have right. done, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and basically, there's a, there's an actual term for that. Um, I'm sure Nano Girl knows exactly what I'm talking about. She's probably like chomping at the bit to talk talk about this. But what happens is when the space time continuum folds upon one another, what happens? You you kind of split that veil and allow things to slip through the time and. I, I personally personally believe that what they have witnessed are may maybe something along the lines of what you saw in that movie, uh, where ancient articles they may have gone down through CERN and and they're trying they're trying to do it very scientific like oh these these bizarre things that fell through yeah it may be coins from like the eighteen hundreds the seventeen hundreds watches 
buttons, uh, button hooks, strange things that just absolutely appeared. Now, have you ever heard of the phenomena where you drop something and it's gone? It's like, where in the hell did it go? Have yeah, you like ever dropped something? Where the hell did it go? Yeah, where did it go? You drop something and it's just like gone. And it's like, where in the heck can you look everywhere? Maybe it fell in through a time dimension. I actually believe that these unexplained falling objects, probably they collected all kinds of gold coins, buttons, uh, odd little baubles and stuff from a different time. That very is very interesting. interesting. And Pop, I, I know you were wanting it at this point, man. No, I was just actually listening to this whole thing about these falling particles. Because remember, I've been on the road for a month or so. There's a few things that I didn't Did know. Did anything about. fall on you? Did you get like an anvil to fall on you? Like the, uh, the coyote or oh, something? Oh, but driving through some of the roads in Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, you have to be careful of the falling rocks like the huge one that we saw. Did you get abducted by aliens and get like an anal probe? No, thank God. Just oh, checking. Oh, okay. Uh, let me, it's, it's, excuse just, me. Pardon I, me, guys. L- let, me, let me break protocol here. Popeye? Dude, I need to talk to you because I heard you say something on your show the other night that connected big time with me. And it doesn't relate with CERN or falling particles or strange things falling out of the sky. It relates to something you said about freedom and being there and like all of this. Dude, I connected with you big time. You're telling a great truth to all the listeners on T- uh, Truth Frequency Radio, TFR, that you need to tell. It's even bigger than CERN. Well, it is the truth. If you go out there and you just when you when you go like go on I forty in the middle of New Mexico and look to the left, look to the right, you'll see nothing but open land. So, like my point was that even though we're told this is a police state and that we're controlled and to be afraid and oh my god, oogity boogie, the, the guys in the SWAT team gear and oh my god, the powers that shouldn't be are so they're so tyrannical, they're big bullies, and I don't know what to do. It's really not like that. I mean, it's like that in the big cities, but when you, I didn't see SWAT teams on the mesas in New Mexico. I saw nothing but open plains and freedom, which means that it still exists. It's still there. It's just in our minds that we're, it, we're losing it. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, baby. You just hit it, man. I've been try- I, When I heard you say that, I'm like, I got to talk to this guy because I tell you what. What you just said is so true. We all talk about this metaphysical stuff. Oh, yeah, big woo stuff, metaphysical. It's real. It's really real. What Popeye's saying is so true. You know what? Um, I had an experience many years ago where a guy, he, he contacted me. I was on the radio at that time. He's like, oh, Phoenix, you need to do this, man. You're, you're like special forces, and you were a ranger. You need to, like, stand up. You need to be with, like, Oath Keepers and, you know, make a stand. I'm like, you know, uh, you know I'm, not, I'm none of that. I'm not Oath Keepers. I'm none of that. You know, I am who I am. And uh, he's like, uh, excuse my language, he said, you're a pussy because you don't stand up against the government and fight for your rights. I'm like, you have to fight for freedom. I'm like, no, I don't. He goes, you have to stand up and fight for freedom. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm free, dude. I already got it. He goes, no, you don't understand. You're free. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm free. I already got it. I win. (laughs) Ta-da. I'm free. You know, I don't have to fight anybody. I'm free. It's right there. And he didn't get it. And, And people don't get it that our freedom is here for taking. Are you free? Popeye gets it, guys. Listen to Popeye. Popeye had an epiphany in the desert, picking up lava rock with his sweetheart, with his lover. That is so true. And, man, I resonate with that so much, dude. I want you on my program, and I still do. I want you as a special guest on Phoenix Rising Radio to tell everybody what you experienced because, man, it is so, so true. Yeah, there are bad things going on out there. Yeah, there, there's oppression. Yeah, I'm not sticking my head in the sand and saying it's not. But you know what? We can overcome this, and we can be victors in all this, and you have to accept it. Man, we're free. We're free. Those who are, are bound are those who accept that they're bound. I don't have to fight for freedom. I'm free. Let's teach others to, to feel and know the same thing. See what you've done now, Popeye? What are you doing freeing all these people? (laughs) Dude used to to curse and like, son of a bitch this and son of a bitch that and all these motherfuckers. And, oh, yeah, guess what? You went out, you found freedom, and you're sharing it with everybody. Really, I want you on the program. I really need you on Phoenix Rising Radio to tell everybody 
what you found. Yeah, no worries, dude. I'll definitely come on and hang out. That's cool. Just let me know when. Yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, the power of love and freedom. Ah. Yeah, so all you got to do is go drive Joe. 800 miles. The love, harmony, and balance. That's the three things. Elites and these ones behind the scenes, these entities, that's what they try and disrupt all the time. And life preservers. Don't forget life preservers for Nano. Nano's welcome uh, to Scotland. She knows that. <laughs> you're, an, you're just going to be pulling my chain all night long, Joe. I'm telling you. You know, I have to you give up. You can't, you can't be joking. Joke, 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 forget it. <laughs> and a big, huge shout out to everyone in the chat room and on the streams. None of this is possible without any of you. A big Absolutely shout out right. to the Geos who will be coming up right after this show, one hour from now. And again, none of this possible without them either. So please remember to visit the site, share it on social media. And I can't thank them enough tonight, Joe. Awesome. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah. Well. Is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to the last hour, unfortunately, of the Freaky Friday. And what a show this has been so far. We've still got one hour to go. Tonight I'm joined by JD, I've got Popeye, I've got Joe Joseph, we have got Phoenix from Phoenix Rising Radio, and we have the Nano Girl. Now, we were just saying during the break there as well, folks, it's quite kind of humbling to see all these people in the chat room. And, you know, I'd love to see this kind of attendance for absolutely every show across the network. Because right now, EFR, I don't know if you are picking it up out there tonight, but there is an absolute vibe right here amongst the hosts. And I'm very, very lucky to be a part of this. And thank all of you out there. And thank all of you hosts as well. Now, Popeye... Another part of your road trip that I found really, really interesting was the fact you're bathing in all this radiation, man. Tell us about that. Well, actually, this whole country's bathing in radiation. Uh, you know, one of the most disturbing spots, besides the, the videos that I took, uh, Christina and I uh, took readings pretty much everywhere we went, and she noticed this. We were like nine stories up at one point in Denver, and there were pretty high readings, nine stories up. Like, that's not like right, uh, you know, you could say, well, you know, if you hold the meter above the ground, blah, blah, blah. We were nine stories up. And fact, you'd expect that this, maybe 36,000 feet when inside an aluminum can flying along, but nine stories? Yeah, well, it's just very, uh, it's interesting. So anyway, we were going along like through New Mexico and we had stopped at a Flying J truck stop when we were headed uh, westbound out to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And... Christina breaks out the uh, the Geiger, and she saw this cactus, and she it it just looked very odd. The sick, really like dying cactus. She walks over and she puts the Geiger by it, and, it, and it, well, first of all, in the air, like five or six feet above the ground, it was pinging at like some. Uh, I think it was like between one twenty and one fifty somewhere around there. And she'll be able, she remembers more of this, and she's going to get into it with me. She's coming on next week. We're going to talk all about this in detail, but. Uh, it was it was pinging, you know, like we'll say around like 150, and then it went uh, when she brought it over by the cactus, it shot up over 300, and 300 is like hazmat level. So we decided to shoot a video really quick, and then on the way back, about four days later, we were coming back through the same area, so we stopped at a truck stop 20 miles away at a rest area, the Route 66 Casino, and then we stopped at the very same truck stop, and the readings were high at both places. So, I mean, there's multiple reasons. Like, you have Chernobyl that happened years ago. You have Fukushima that's happened and still happening, by the way. You know, I know everybody cares about Tom Brady and his deflated balls, but nobody really cares about that huge nuke reactor that's still spewing radiation out. Everybody keep worrying about football and not Fukushima. should be the other way around. But you have those two events. Then you have the, the, the latest Chernobyl fire, but that hadn't happened yet. So we have to rule that out as a source for the radiation, at least when we took the videos and did the readings. So, yes, J.D., you're correct. WIP, which Christina brings up in the, the one video, you have all the, the nuke tests out there. Any leaking plants within the area, you know, storage places like WIP. Um, and then one of the commenters in the video brought up a good point on YouTube. Uranium mining. The trucks going in and out of the mine get the dust on the, on the tires, 
up on the undercarriages. I mean, and when undercarriage, I mean everything, frame, uh, the, the brake drums, everything. So even the air canisters, the lines, everything. So then it rains, they're driving along and it's raining, all that gets washed off. Or it doesn't get washed off and it, they, they pull into the truck stop and it gets carried off, you know, it gets knocked into the parking lot and then picked up and blown around by the wind, and you have this ongoing. So there could be multiple sources for it, which is actually even a little more frightening than just having one. Like, I would, I would rather, ju- I'd rather have none. But if we're going to have to have a reason why there's radioactivity in, you know, 10 feet from the door of a truck stop, I would choose to rather only have one. But I just listed like five or six. That's the scary part. That's how radioactive it is out there. Like, and you're just, I mean, you're in it. Driving around. So, and you're, so wait a minute. Let me, and this, it, it's even worse because you didn't even get to uh, the West Coast, California. So imagine this, Nano. 9.8 earthquake. You're out there <laughs> floating around. And now you're getting radiated, too. Oh, Jewel. Uh, oh, oh, my God, Joe. Now, you got JJ, go to- I'm telling you. Abrams has got my back on the on the Golden Gate, um, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I was thinking when you were listening, and I have listened to the Rad Girls too, and it, not to mention the food. God knows what Monsanto's doing, um, and, and and of course, if you're in California, we got the drought. We have Fukushima, so it's coming off the ocean. It's in our fish. People are still eating fish, so they're still eating that. My big question is, how much of this stuff can we take? Um, it, it's our bodies are so much more resilient. I mean, and of course, a lot of us are sick, and a lot of us, you know, are not doing well because of it. But still, it blows my mind sometimes how much our bodies can take of this stuff, and we're still, you know, we're still talking on the radio. How long do you think it's going to take until we actually start seeing some health effects here in our country as a result of this? And do you think anybody actually cares? I mean, in terms you of. Are. The whip. Th- I mean, are we really right now? Fundamentally, you think? Okay, Pop? go out. Go out and look at the West Coast. Christina and I are gonna. We're gonna probably crowdsource it. We're gonna rent an RV and we're gonna go uh, spend like two or three weeks going up the West Coast doing uh, radioactivity readings. Oh, I mean, like every fifty to hundred miles, we want to stop and take detailed readings and samples and stuff. So that's why we. we if we're gonna do it right, we it, we're gonna have to crowdsource it. When you like, when you get here, you have to call me and we'll do coffee. No, we can. No, we'll definitely. We can stop and do breakfast, hang out, whatever. Oh, gonna, that would. I'd love to meet you guys in person. We're planning on getting an RV, so it'll be cool. Yeah. But, um, dude, are you going to be like? You are so going to be like Randy Quaid on Christmas Vacation, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. hilarious! Exactly. That'll be. I can see Popeye like reeling back. I just plate in my head, man. Wham! <laughs> Hi, right. Clay. Hey. Welcome hey. Back. <laughs> Hey, uh, that's one of them there RVs over there. <laughs> I can just see it now. Well, I don't, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see the readings because, I mean, Fukushima is hitting the West Coast hardcore. Look, people, yeah. that thing's going on constantly. People think that mm-hmm. they cap Fukushima and it's over. No, it's getting no, far. Our, yeah. our fish are dead. I Christina, mean, Christina the, the die-off here is exactly. of mutations. When we were out, she actually taught me how to mutation hunt because I didn't know the ins and the outs. And she taught me how she does it. And there's a lot of mute, like in certain areas, there's a lot of mutated plant life, which is scary because if the plants are reacting like that, that's a long term thing, right? So you have starfish melting. The last time she was on, the interview we did has over 10,000 views on YouTube already. But uh, there's starfish that are melting. She, I asked her about that in, on the show. I said, well, what about these melting starfish? And she said, yeah, well, the people that study starfish, they've never seen them melt either. Oh, that's nice. So the people that study starfish for a living, you know, whatever they are, oceanographers, whatever the hell it is, the ocean biologists, whatever the hell they're called, these people are not used to seeing starfish melting. Nice. Yo, Popeye, question for you. Um, what type of equipment are you using? What type of handheld thing are you using for uh, radiation detection? She's got two different Geiger counters. Uh, I'm going to ask her on Monday exactly all the different units of measurement and everything they read in because she knows all of that in detail. That's why next, or whenever the hell it is, next Tuesday or Thursday, whenever we're doing the show together, um, we're going to get into all that sh- and we're going to get into like what everything means, you know, her thoughts that, on that. That's you and Nano, you and Nano girl are doing that? No, no, no. Rad chick. She's a, uh, she's, oh, well, she's a guest on my show about a bazillion times, but uh, okay. she's a, uh, her, she went, she was my co-pilot on my road trip for like two and a half weeks. So, 
my trip was like a month, but she hung out with me for about two and a half weeks and let me drag her all over the country. And we did radiation readings all over the place. And we stopped in New Mexico at one of the spots. That's where I was talking about the two truck stops. It's pretty crazy, actually. When you think about wow. all the radioactivity that's around it, because you can't see it. Like, it'd be different if you could see it in the air, like dust particles or snow, but you can't yeah. see it. So it's kind of, it's kind of freaky. It's kind of creepy. Um, you just got to know what's going on. But yes, it's definitely affecting the West Coast. Starfish are melting. By the way, starfish breathe. Christina explained this to me that they breathe, you know, the water in and out, right? Well, if there's radioactive water that's going in and out of their body, right, it's like starfish chemo. So that's one of the reasons they're probably melting. And all the sea life that's dying on the West Coast. You know, people think that Fukushima is not a problem. Yeah. People, but people think Fukushima is not a problem because people aren't just dropping dead from it. But how do we know? First of all, the infant mortality rate went up on the West Coast at, right after Fukushima. So there's that. But besides that, how about the long term? Because radiation, it's cumulative. So what about the people that didn't have any issues before? How about we study cancer rates since Fukushima? and see if the cancer rates have gone up. How about heart disease? How about, and when I say cancer rates, I mean across the board, like lung cancer, brain cancer, all of that stuff. You, we, have to, we have to look into this stuff. This is what's really going on. So you have that from Fukushima, then you have all the exposure from Chernobyl, all the nuke tests, and then all the leaking sites. Again, JD mentioned WIP. It's, it, it's just, and people think nuke energy is cool. Oh, and by the way, Joe, Duke Energy just got nailed for all the coal ash over in your neck of the woods. In North Kakalaki, and I think Pennsylvania too. Lucky for me, I don't. Uh, I'm not anywhere near Duke Power. I don't. I don't. I don't have Duke. But that's that's actually further southeast. And then, um, and then they had just had a problem with that uh, not too far in uh, the Chesapeake area of Hampton Roads, uh, Virginia, where there was a, a golf course that was built over an old coal ash pit, and. The groundwater got contaminated, and man, I mean, you're talking like a whole neighborhood couldn't, you know, the drinking water was contaminated. So, uh, yeah, it, you know, that's that's a problem in and of itself. And that coal ash is found to be radioactive. How interesting is that? You know, the interesting thing Joe says, how interesting is that? The coal ash is activated. Here's how, how this is interesting. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. By communicating through radio, through truth frequency radio, we get this information out to everyone, be it in Europe, be it in, in the United States, uh, South America, anywhere. This information of oddities or things that we should be aware of goes out worldwide. We have listeners all over in Europe. Uh, duh, Kev Baker show. <laughs> yeah, South yeah. America, North America, everywhere. All of our listeners worldwide. And this is the thing about Truth Frequency Radio and getting this information out to everyone that we all know, that we communicate, that we rise above the mainstream media, that we cut through all this bullshit that the truth gets out. And, you know, Joe, like, it, it may be minor to people. Someone in Scotland may be listening to Joe like, yeah, 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 whatever, Pennsylvania. Dig this. I'm in Pennsylvania. Joe, thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. telling me that and this information coming out. I appreciate that. And Nano Girl on the West Coast and everybody everywhere. The more we can, we can spread this information, get this truth out to everyone, truth, frequency, radio. That's what this is all about, that we, we get the truth. And we rise above all of the bullshit and the lies that the mainstream media is, um, I don't say pushing. It's, it's like a veil they put, like a chemical veil they put over everybody. The chemical veil. Now, are you talking about the Higgs, uh, the Higgs field? <laughs> the Higgs field, the... the, the uh, um, oh I had to God. go there for Kev because, you know, we, I don't think we got quantum enough tonight, Kev. No, this is fascinating. I'm listening to all this. I'm loving this. It's really, really great stuff. And, you know, maybe, just maybe, we needed a week away from the quantum stuff anyway. Plenty of time yeah. for that next week, Joe. Yeah, you know, and, and it's like J.D. just uh, typed in, uh, right? J.D. frequency manipulation. 
Dude, it comes back all the way. I mean, everything comes back to these Rothschilds and, and Rockefellers. But uh, we had Elsie El- Vincent on the show, and we've talked about the changing of uh, the, the natural tone of the A above middle C on a piano down from 440. Well, it should be 432, and they've changed it and basically industrialized it into this 440. Uh, so that's just another example to well, me. Well, 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 stop, 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 stop right there. What did you just say? What did you just say? About they did what? Okay. You don't know this story? No, so, I don't know the story, dude. Tell okay. me the story. I'm well, a musician. I used to use 440 as a as tune, eight. but I refused it. And what I would do is I reverse it, and I would go to a negative 440 on all my band tunings, and I made all of my band tune to a negative 440. Wow. What the hell are you talking about, dude? Well, 440 was was not A. It's not ever been A above middle C on a piano. And back yeah, in like the 1800s, Solfeggio, right? we're talking solfeggio here. Yeah, the normal tone for A in nature when you look at cymatics is 432. And that's what we see on the Roslyn Chapel. I mean, they knew about this way back in the day. But the Rothschilds basically went into symphonies over in Europe. And they essentially started to demand that everybody tune to 440. So they kind of took over the symphony mode first. And then they subsidized a guy in Chicago who made non-tunable instruments like xylophones and things like that, something that once it was set, it was set, right? You know, because a xylophone, once that wood is that shape, that's the tone it's going to be unless you reshape the wood. So the Rockefellers put a whole bunch of money into this guy's organization, and they pumped out these non-tunable instruments to all of the symphonies and orchestras worldwide, right? And then they took it a step further. They started to uh, use church bells, and they moved, they moved that frequency into church bells, and the ABC chimes on TV and radio, man. Everything is tuned to that 440 frequency, which is not in keeping with nature, absolutely promotes disease and disharmony. And I'll tell you, if you really want a good example of it, go and listen to John Lennon's Imagine. Just go to YouTube, type in John Lennon Imagine and listen to the original track. It doesn't sound that bad. Then listen to it tuned to 432 because there are, there are computers out there that you can actually adjust the entire tuning. When you go back and listen to the 440 version, you can feel your entire body clench up because even though it's John Lennon's Imagine, which is supposedly you know a very peaceful, nice, loving song, the underlying frequencies in it do damage to you on a physical level. When we talk about how frequency can affect water and a matter, imagine what they're doing if they're using church bells to pump this out over your community or using the radio with the ABC chimes to pump it out into your community or... Nickelback. I mean, really, it fundamentally, it all comes back to Nickelback to me because that is the, I mean, in total embodiment of this unnatural music. We've got this horrible pop stuff that's going on all the time right now, but it's all tuned to the wrong frequency. They're promoting disease, and I, I can guarantee you it's the Rothschilds that had a major, major hand in that, Phoenix. J.D., J.D., you, Nickelback, you say? I do say what Nickelback. About, what Weaponized about- music. Okay, the Ramones. I'm, I'm asking you just one question openly. What about the Ramones? I don't know enough about what their tuning was or uh, who their management was. I do know, talking to LC, that the entire uh, country music theme of music here in our country was created by the Rothschilds. I've also read a great book on the Laurel Canyon gang, all these kids that lived out in Laurel Canyon when they kind of usurped the uh, the hippie movement and started you know bringing the LSD and all that stuff. All of those guys, <clears throat> I mean, every one of them had ties to the military industrial complex. So I'm not going to say anything about the Ramones because uh, I, I haven't dude, done any research on them, but okay. I'd certainly be interested. Dude, you're freaking me out. I will tell you a lot about the Ramones personally, and I'll tell you right now that the Ramones knew in their heart, and those who listen to the Ramones and other people knew that 440 was not right. Mm-hmm. Below 440, negative 440, negative 440, negative 440. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into it right now tonight because we have so much great things to talk about. But I will tell you right now, J.D. Moore, you are correct. 440 and all that is wrong. And yeah. people knew, people knew instinctively, negative 440. And, and the, uh, this subject kind of ties into your uh, Wi-Fi thing you know in the baseball field uh, Popeye oh you're referring to the Wi-Fi tower video that I took when I was yeah out. dude I mean that's uh, we see that everywhere now they're I'm, popping up I'm, everywhere I'm in the gym and I look out the window and I'm like okay there's there's one Wi-Fi tower right up against the baseball field I need to video that when I'm done and go out and do a bitching video so I walk out and as I'm walking out I look up and I'm like oh 
there's three of them out here. And I'm like, <laughs> why are they all surrounding the baseball field? And I see the lights on them, and I'm like, oh, that's how they sold it. We'll put your lights on it. We'll, we'll help revamp your baseball field. Yeah, so the kids can play baseball. They'll all die of cancer by the time they're 15 or 16. Yeah, let, let us put our stingray, t- I mean, our cell tower up there. for. <laughs> it's for the children. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always for the children. You know, really quick, I want to play a clip for you guys. This is, and I've played this before. Anybody ever, well, most of the people here have probably heard of John Todd. I don't know if, Phoenix, if you've ever heard of him or not. Um, I've discussed him with, um, when I've talked to, uh, uh, different researchers before anybody in the music industry, Fritz Springmeier. And, uh, and from, from what I can see, he was real. He was a, Fritz says that his weird behavior, uh, cause some people will say, oh, well he, he, you know, he kind of acted weird here or there. Well, he was a multiple. So that's one of the reasons, but I, I don't want to get too sidetracked with it. The point is he made uh, some interesting comments back in like the late 70s, early 80s about the music industry. And I just want to share this with everybody because I think, I, I really do think that this will kind of, uh, you know, resonate with people. You guys were talking about how music and the, the frequencies and everything else. Well, this is John Todd talking about um, what they do, at least, and you, you could believe it or not, I'm just putting it out there. This has to do more with like spiritual uh, and the occult, but again, intent, energy, frequency, right? So this is what he said that they do. So let's just listen for a second. Council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions name has been changed since then. I'm not even sure what they call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records, owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the, the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises. And Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it all back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It's one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby, Crosby, Still Nash and Young. I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood, and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store, and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, but you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the colon conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now I got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He says the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He says, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. Said, Thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and is placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the eight tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a is cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies. Yeah, it locks doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar setting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor, and 13 hand-chosen witches and witch- wizards and a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. That's how many Christian parents, you can go home and count your kids' records, probably yours too, to count how many demons at least are there. 
That's too hard for you to believe? I'm sorry. That's why they do it. Now listen to me. This is why rock music is addicting. Have you ever seen kids that got rid of their music? They go around like this. They can't wait to find a rock station somewhere and they sneak off just like getting a cigarette or a fix because it's addicting. That's why they can't give it up. The rest of the conversation was this. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. You give the permission for the spell to work, being a Christian won't block it. And rock music is not just a song. It is supernatural music that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. Now, although the devil's music par is the music and God's music is the words, much of the songs are written in what we call witch language. Give you kind of an idea. You talk, on, many of you talk on a CB, unless you know what, you, what a smoky is, and uh, a tin four, and uh, uh, a front door and back door and rocking chair and these type of things, you don't know what you're talking about. Same with witches. When you're at the first and second level, you have to learn over 2,000 words that said by anybody else means something totally different than when you say them. Elton John has said he's never written a song or sung a song that wasn't in which language. Now, I want to show you something. See how many kids in here will be honest and adults. How many remember and have heard at least several times a song called Hotel California? Somebody tell me what it meant. Quickly, somebody tell me what it meant. Huh? That's pretty close. But from the words, what did it mean? That's more of a guess. See, most people can't tell you. That's why when people do drugs and they listen to songs in which language, they get some of the meaning. But most of the time, they can't tell you. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road? How about Destroyer by Kiss? Can anybody tell me what it's about? Kiss said in it, kids, tell your parents. They're talking about Helder Skelter. Beatles sung Helder Skelter in which language? Nobody knew what it meant. Manson did because he belongs to the process. Helder Skelter is a seven, several thousand year old word. Most of the music is either about Helder Skelter or a place called the Night Winds, which is what Hotel California is about, and different doctrines of witchcraft. You listen to them, your parents let you listen to them, and they have no idea. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Look up John Todd. Do some research because you just do not know what you're being subjected to. Pay attention. Going to break. Stay tuned. We'll be back in. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back, everybody. Joe Joseph here. Final segment of Freaky Friday, and then we hand it off to the Geos. Man, it's a great night here at TFR. Wonderful uh, night. All the, the, the good hosts here at TFR joining us, uh, coming together on Freaky Friday to discuss some, yeah. Some topics of interest, you know, that we really don't have time to talk about sometimes because of all the, you know, other stuff that's going on in the world. Great way to blow off steam. And um, speaking of blow off steam, you know, there is a somebody, a certain somebody here that um, is currently getting radiated, soon to be floating, um, Nano. Uh, now, <laughs> what do we oh, got? That is uh, so I mean. <laughs> so, so, Joe, where's what state are you? You're in Missouri, right? I'm, I'm, no, I'm in the state of North Carolina. Okay. Oh, you're in North Carolina. Oh, I was gonna say maybe we get a you get a tsunami and then it just flips right over to your state and we'll share no, the no, no, with you. Where Joe lives, the tsunami won't be able to find him because he oh, lives. No. In the of Wheresville, it won't be able to find his. He lives ex- in the most depressing place in the world. The, what is it? The dismal swamp. No, the Great Dismal Swamp. Oh, the Great Dismal Swamp. (laughs) Stop. Stop all of this. You're saying he lives in the Dismal Swamp in Pennsylvania? I live in Pennsylvania. Does not Joe live in Pennsylvania? No, 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 North Carolina. North Carolina. North Kakalaki. And when I say he lives out in the middle of nowhere, Joe wasn't kidding. He's like, when you drive down the road and you hit the state line, the pavement's going to go from decent to, like, crap. And you're going to lose your cell phone signal. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, within like a couple hundred feet or maybe a half a mile of wherever the, it says, you know, North Carolina state line. He's not kidding. North Carolina has like this wall of like whatever, a, a, a wall of vibrational a frequency, will. something, a veil of something. Maybe that's what CERN's putting up. I don't know. All I know is <laughs> enter North Carolina and your cell phone service goes, good night. And it turns off your GPS. 
Good night. Goodbye. What GPS? That's why I said it, there could be an earthquake and a tsunami would swallow up all of the United States. Except I told you, I live in another dimension. Actually, see, I'm broadcasting from another dimension. Seriously. Uh. Oh, you better hide because the chat room are not happy with you noising up our nano girl. They need you to stop this, man. They're, they're not oh, a happy well, bunch of campers yeah, at all. Yeah. And, you know, Did we get derailed anyway? Go to ahead, get Nick, back on right. track during the J- break, we were talking J. J. about... J.J. Emerson is not happy either, Joe J- Joseph. Son of a gun. <laughs> what the hell happened? You can just Nano, hide at Joe you can Grove, Nano, and you'll be fine. Trust me. Okay. Except for the ticks. Bring some tick repellent. You definitely need some uh, lavender oil. Well, actually, you use toothpaste. We use toothpaste out where I'm working. We have a bunch of ticks. We use toothpaste. You just put toothpaste on them, and they don't like that. You give Lather them Lather yourself up with fluoride. Who knew? See? See? It's good for <laughs> something. For it. Did you guys know that? I just it pulled was- two of the three out, and the third one, the head broke off, so I went and broke out one of my trusty piercing needles and did a little... Open like surgery and carve the head out, and it's all good to go. Cleaned up, we good to go. We no we well, Papa, we can't do that to our guests, but I can. I can recommend, and evidently <laughs> they hate mint toothpaste with fluoride the most. So, just a FYI to, to the chatters out there, that's how you take care of a tick. Just put a bunch of toothpaste just on put it, breast on it, and it's like, ugh. ugh. Are you guys talking about piercing? You guys no. Piercing? Dude, no, we're no, talking I about the piercer and another. during the break, guys. We started talking <laughs> hey, about the music and Okay, I'm sorry. I was like kind of distracted. Like Popeye pierced Nano no, Girl. We're talking Is about that that no, dude. We're talking about uh, putting toothpaste on ticks. And we're about to talk okay. about the music industry, Nano See? and Laurel and Canyon. And I don't think we're going to make it past the toothpaste and the ticks no, and me falling not. into the ocean with Joe Joseph. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think we've. I, it started when you guys started Freaky Friday around four, and then I went into the chat and said, "No, that's not going to happen." JJ Abrams well, said so. Okay, so Nano Girl got pierced and fell into the ocean with Joe Joseph. Yeah, exactly. Can you believe okay. it? Uh, okay, go there ahead. You go. So anyway, Nano, you, we were talking about the music industry, right? Yes. Yes. And where were we going with this? You had a point think, to bring. I think, I think everybody was having a good time, but I, I think all, all my comment was I always thought this was a sort of uh, spontaneous 60s, you know, uh, leave it to beaver. We're sick of being leave it to beaver and we're going to break out of our mold and we're going to say F you to our parents and uh-huh. we're going to do free love and flower power and blah, 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 blah. But evidently this was kind of planned and all the music, <laughs> and all the songs. And, but I have to say in defense of that time zone, the music was pretty cool. Cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. She don't last. She don't last. She don't last. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, know. You're, you are. You're right. I mean, it, there was some. Well, there was some cool good stuff. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Was that a, a Phoenix unmute? Is that what you said? <laughs> Phoenix unmute. Okay, going back to mute. Never mind. <laughs> We're talking about the words from <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> and, yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. And earthquakes. All right. Back to you, Joe. <laughs> back to me. Back to Kev. Actually, there we go. Okay. Back to Kev. <laughs> and Kev's like, and no. I was trying to get us to Laurel Canyon away from that car crash for six minutes, guys. You have it. <laughs> we 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 did we were we did we were on Laurel Canyon. We were talking about uh, Canyon. We were talking about the words from some of these very cool songs. And but I think I think the bottom line, the shocking part for me is that it wasn't spontaneous. I think that's where we were going with this. I think I think the uprising was spontaneous. I think people realized that there was going to be a large pushback. And I think the Laurel Canyon and the introduction of LSD and the uh, co-opting of that whole culture was part of the military industrial complex trying to, again, divide and conquer you know they take they can take those people that might have actually had the power to rise up and get people behind them and get them all messed up on LSD and turned on to the Grateful Dead and follow them around for five years and now you know that any of those leaders that were in that movement are all co opted at this point. You know? The whole counterculture was actually created. The they knew that there was going to be an end. They're not stupid. They understand how how society works. They knew that there would be 
Uh, you oh, know, uh, these, uh, well, oh, this, is, this, this is this is the United States calling Phoenix LSD LSD LSD. Can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? Not in your LSD. No, <laughs> Jesus, have mercy. Hang out, with, hang out with Timothy Leary, Phoenix, and let me know how he's doing. The, the whole counterculture was created purposely. I mean, it was it was done because they knew that they needed to have a pressure relief valve, and they yeah. did. It. And they did lot, because you're, there you're, was. You're, you're correct, Neil, because a lot of these famous people that were in that, okay, yeah. and so is JD, and, and everybody like is on point tonight about this. The, and this is an important point to to point out because, like I said, <laughs> break a lot of the. Um, I asked a uh, uh, a. Uh, a retired homicide detective that I had on the the guy I did the serial killer show with. I said to him uh, during the show, and we had talked about this off air. I said, "Isn't it interesting that during the '60s and the '70s there was this mass uptick in serial killers, and at the same time as when they were doing all this MK Ultra mind control experiments?" And he said, "No, there's a huge direct correlation between the two." And this is a retired homicide detective who put serial killers away for a living. So, I mean, you don't get any more credible than that, right? You can't tell me he's a conspiracy tard. You can't attack him. They will. But anyway, so it's just interesting because when you look at that and you look at all this other evidence, you look at the music and everything and you look at that whole time period and you understand that that whole counterculture was created as like a pressure relief valve to begin with. How deep does that actually go? You can, know, I how- ask a, can I ask a question real quick? And this yes. is to uh, Johnny King since, you know, you and Charles Manson basically are like twin brothers. And, and you, you Cellmates. Come, you, you come, <laughs> And you come from that, uh, that you know, that era of Dude, love that's and harmony. That's classic. So, uh, so, so, what do you think about that? I mean, you're a connoisseur of music. <laughs> uh, yes, and I, I was just thinking about what uh, Popeye played earlier. I have never heard, as an experienced witch, any spells in Philadelphia Freedom or Animal Rock or any of the other songs that man sung. Okay, well. well well, you, you might not have heard it, and you might be what you consider to be an experienced witch, but are you the same type of witch or on the same page that these people are? Maybe not. That's why... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Is he, is he made of wood? No, I, no, no. I mean, is, if John... <laughs> John's a good guy. It doesn't matter what John's beliefs are, spiritual-wise. John's a good guy. He wouldn't be invited in this club because John's got a conscience and a soul. Right. He's act, you know, as much we might break each other's traps back and forth. But John's really a good guy. He's a good friend of mine. Like you wouldn't be invited in this club. So maybe I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying perhaps maybe that's why you don't see it, because it's their own little speak in their own little secret group. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they do compartmentalize. That's I'm just that I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know uh, if that's actually the reason, but they do. Johnny compart- King, uh, out of curiosity, uh, since you're a witch, do you do you weigh the same as a duck? <laughs> well, see, a lot of good music came out of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and a lot of that is due to the drugs that were being experimented with back in those days. So we owe a lot of the music that that we have now that have been inspired by the music that I grew up to was all due to the experimentation of drugs, LSD, marijuana, uppers, downers, sideways, whatever. Well, no. Is there it, any good music out there, though, that's uh, that we feel like is pure and made from the right place? That I mean, is is there any genre or anything that any of us would be comfortable with thinking okay. isn't today's version of what he be, what he was talking about in that video? If you believe what he's saying, today's version of it would be hip hop, right? And, Katy Perry and all of that nonsense and pop music, because there's. Uh, no- there's nothing to it. I mean, at least at least back in the day, the rock bands still had some. There was like lyrics to what they were singing, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's actually me. Like, there's you, a lot of good. There's a lot of good rock bands out there now that are not on major labels that are still making amazing music. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, I, I think I'm, it's rock and roll in general. Remember, the comments were made back in the '70s, so mm-hmm. you, you know, it, it would be like someone saying hip hop in general for all music nowadays it's the same thing but it's Somebody not brought up that Devo is also a part of the grab bass conspiracy oh it could be I mean you never know with it, with it, with it, with it. You, know, I, you never know but, throw uh, them in, sir. the counterculture was, <laughs> there are certain people when I say it was created all you need to do is have certain leaders be controlled and then everything kind of goes from there 
Um, and it, it, they can use it as like a pressure relief, like a steam valve. I'm not saying that good things didn't come out of people using drugs. You know, the internet was originally intended to track us, right? And we turned around and look what we've done with it. Why do you, they underestimated it until like 2006, 2007. And then that's when Jay Rockefeller later came out and said, perhaps the internet never should have existed. Why? Because everybody knows that your family. Well, maybe that's what they want you to stuff. think they think. But really what they think is, eh, acceptable losses. But in the grand scheme of things, look what we've done now. Because look at all the young people. They, can't, they don't even look up and look straight ahead when they walk. They're, they're just attached to their devices. But that's a and double now, you know, that's, also become a, that's also become a big problem you know, in society as well. So maybe, maybe that was part of the plan. You know, I just wanted to throw something in here, too, is that, you know, since JFK happened, that was probably why they needed that release valve, because that, you know, it was like the 9-11. So you do you did need something for people to kind of rail against, because I think all of us knew something was really, really wrong. We had Vietnam. Then we had Martin Luther King killed and they killed Kennedy's brother. So you had a lot of it. Sixty-eight was absolutely crazy. Very volatile, me. yeah. Very volatile. Reminds me of this time now, and I think for me, I mean, that was such a wake-up time. Um, I never. I think by the time I was twenty-one, I was on my way of saying, you know, this is ridiculous. And a part of it was all the sixties, all the stuff. You had one one thinkology, we're going to continue to try to love like Leave it to Beaver, and then we had this whole other thing where it's like, wait a second, we can't do that anymore because that's not going to work and it's crazy and it's not going to work because there was all this undercurrent. So Popeye, the way you said that, that's well said, that we needed a relief valve. And that's what it feels, it feels like that now on some kind of level. You know, I th- although I think they're taking a lot more action now, and they're they're really going for the grab on this one. I mean, I don't know how far they're going to take all the Jade Helm and all this stuff, but it's kind of kind of that same crazy making, out of control, blow everything, a blow up religion, bro, you know, blow up the the elections, blow up the country, blow, you know, just blow up all the institutions, and then you know have the stars go out there and do some really actually very disgusting things like Miley Cyrus, God love her. And, you know, and they're all mind controlled. So kind of, it's kind of a, a, it's like living through this again. Only I like the music better from the sixties. That's all I'm saying. Just my take on it. So if, if you were going to San Francisco, would you put flowers (laughs) in your hair? (laughs) Every time I do. And Joe, do you know what? Every time I do, because it's good luck. And it keeps the bridge safe. And it's kind of like this good leg, you know, like, you know, you find a lucky penny. You put flowers in your hair. Are you going <laughs> to San Francisco? I'll meet you there. Yep, yep, yep. Put the flowers in your hair and I hope they float because uh, 9.8, <laughs> May 28th, it's coming, baby. It's coming. Okay, if, it, if that happens, I'm going to find a way to call you people. I'm going to be on the ground. It's going to be nano on the ground reporting from. Can I just point out that if there was going to be an earthquake of that magnitude on the 28th, which is what, maybe 13 days from now? Yeah. yeah, um, Well, (laughs) if if that was, if that's the case, you would expect to be seeing microquakes. Oh, stop. No microquakes. (laughs) Really? You didn't see all the microquakes along like. Oh, no, I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean like the three and the four is like in the middle of the country. I mean like California would be just like three, four, and, and even probably fives. Like Lee, if you're going to have something that – like I know people are going to say, oh, it could just build up and slip. Okay, but something of that magnitude, if it was actually leading up to that, I would think that you'd at least have something leading up to it. Even if it was a tiny little two or one or – you know, there would be something. There would be rumbling. I I'm just well, busting chops, you know, really. And <laughs> so to answer that comment, yes. When we had the 89 earthquake, we had a one exactly the week before. And it helped me prepare for the 89 because that was a much, obviously a much bigger one. And it was exactly one week before. So to answer your question, good possibility. And yeah. in the grand scheme of things, though, you know, that wasn't big. Like in comparison to Fukushima, uh, Fukushima was much bigger than the San Francisco earthquake of 89. It was pretty big for me. The the ceiling oh, no. tiles were falling down, windows were popping out of the building. I mean, bridges collapsing. <laughs> but but, but people that's dying. 
people don't understand. You know, when you get a magnitude six earthquake or higher, that's bad. Anything bigger than, than six is bad, especially in areas that aren't built to, to withstand any sort of earthquakes like Nepal. You know, you're talking about uh, very, very old, old infrastructure, if any at all. Right. It's uh, been very, very devastating over there. By the way, uh, country's infrastructure. OK, dude, all you need is one well-placed uh, earthquake in this country and really any part of it. And that's one of the things we uh, Christina and I noticed driving around a lot of the concrete like overpasses. Underneath, oh, they're brittle. Dude, they're they're like when I say crack, there's chunks missing with like huge pieces. You can see the rebar. Just so we're clear, you're not supposed to be able to see the rebar. <laughs> okay. Just just so we're all clear on that, okay? That's that they don't make it so that stuff can come out optionally. Ooh, see the rebar in action. No, so they no. can inspect it, Popeye. That's why, and they have to be able to inspect the rebar. Yeah, well, not a good idea. And just a lot of our infrastructure is old. That's why this train derailment. I understand the conductor was possibly speeding, but. Um, you know, even if it wasn't that, people are like, well, hey, what about these FBI derailment warnings? And I don't think it was any of that. No, I think they I just think don't maintain it. Bingo. And yeah, I saw it with sucks. my own two eyes, dude. And then you then you have also, which uh, Christina gets into, it's, it's called the Wigner effect, if I remember correctly. It's the effect radiation has on speeding up the decay of metal. So you have all this fallout coming, right? from Fukushima and then from the Chernobyl fire and from Chernobyl back in the day and from all the radioactive tests and everything else and it's floating around in the air and all the DU and everything that Doug Rocky's talked about and then you have that affecting the metal too as well of said infrastructure that was put in by the greatest generation the World War II generation ladies and gentlemen my grandparents generation Joe's grandparents generation your grandparents generation we are currently using the same the same bridges, overpasses, railroad lines in many cases. Doesn't that, doesn't that bother anybody that we haven't updated anything? Does it surprise anyone that there's actually accidents? It doesn't surprise me. But, hey, we have bullets and bombs that can chase you around corners. So that's more important. So let's you know, what's, more you know what scares me, Popeye, is the fact, yeah, we're still building stuff, but it's not as good as what they did in the 30s and the 40s. How is that? I mean, look at, what, look at the Bay Ridge, for, for instance, with all of the issues and stuff that they have going on with that thing. I mean, can, can, can we, have we, uh, was it only our grandparents that knew how to build stuff? What the heck? No, it, it is weird. Like, they built stuff back in the day to last, and you, you'd think that they'd yeah. be able to do it nowadays, but they, well, it's because they do everything cheap now. But we I could, mean. we could, but we choose right. not to, because well, we cheap. want everything cheap and now. Well, isn't it, is, it's not a coincidence that your car breaks down is about the same amount of time after your mortgage or your payments, you know, are planned ended on it. It's obsolete. planned obsolescence. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Same That's thing exactly with cell phones. It. Cell phones are only made. You ever you ever notice that uh, cell phones usually die out right around the same time your two year contract does? I have noticed that my uh, HP laptops have a tendency of doing that as well. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. As soon as you get one of those extended, and I'm not saying that if you buy the extended warranty that you know it lasts right for that time, but it'll last. It'll last two or three years, and then it'll die. It'll stop working. You'll have to put a new hard drive in it, whatever. All of it, it's planned obsolescence, so you have to go buy more. You know, Ford used to make a truck. Uh, well, it used to, it used to make um, uh, uh, not just a truck, but it used to make a, a, an engine that they used to use back in their F100 custom series in the F150s called, and, and some of the 250s had it, but usually just the, the 150s and the F100 customs. It was a inline six. Joe knows what I'm talking about because he was a mechanic too. It was a straight six. It was a 300 cubic inch engine. You could not kill this motor. I had one. I used to change the oil every 10,000 miles on it. Just once every 10,000 miles I used to change the oil. Okay. I had the, I got rid of the truck. The motor had 200, 280,000 miles on it. It had never had a top end or a bottom end done to it ever. Just routine maintenance, you know, some gaskets here and there, but never a full top end or a bottom end rebuild or in tear down and rebuild, right? Nothing of that sort. The guy that, last time I saw it, it had a, well over 300,000 miles on it. The guy was using the truck as a scrap truck to haul scrap, and he had mounted a cherry picker in the back in the bed, okay? Like the bed, I had to get a bed liner for it because the bed rotted out before the engine did. You could not kill this 300 cubic inch straight six, could not kill it, okay? They made it up until the 90s, and in like mid-90s, they stopped making it. 
You know why they stopped making it? Because Too nobody reliable. Buying, yeah, nobody was buying new trucks. They were doing what I was doing and putting new bed liners or going to the junkyard and getting new beds right. from trash trucks and just remove it because you could not kill this motor. And it was a great motor. So they just stopped making it. I, I personally, I don't understand why we just can't move to Mr. Fusion. <laughs> Roads. <laughs> Roads, Joe. That's right. We don't need roads. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because, you know, this is all well and good, you know, the internal combustion engine. But <clears throat> as everything is advancing and we see technology advancing at a rapid pace, come on. But can what we, we need is the koala car. Yeah, but do we really need flying cars? Look, all I got to say is... People no, the can't... koala car is just fine. People, Okay, if we're going to have flying cars, though, which is a cool concept, here's the thing. You have to have some sort of computerized global positioning grid that the car that you can allow the car to maneuver itself in because I, I hate to break the news to everybody but people can't drive with four tires on the ground in a lane that's painted for them clear as day let alone hovering in the sky and depending on you'd have to have like hovering buoys or something right you don't need that because gonna- now they have self-driving cars so you just who needs a steering wheel and everything else? Yeah, I don't see. I don't know if I like that though, because then you're <laughs> a minority report. And by the way, those self-driving cars, yeah, they've been hitting things. So don't yeah, but, only yeah, but, they, but Popeye, what they said was those were all human errors because we're playing trumpets and we're distracted when we drive, and not one of those eleven accidents was Google's fault. And don't worry, you can trust us. We're telling oh, you yeah. the truth. Google world, we're walking the yes. Google world. Like, I want, which I want the government where he the hell about the person it hit right after it hit them. It like Googled them. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yes. Okay, kind of digress from all this. I was behind a Google car one time. No shit. I'm, I'm driving along. I see this thing. It's like, what the hell is on that car? It's like this ball, like these dots on it. I follow it. I'm, you know, I'm like, it's cameras. And I turned, realized that later, that's a Google car. I was actually behind a Google car. So I was recorded by a Google car. I admit, I was there, saw it, um, Did didn't give it the finger. No, Joe, I didn't give it the finger. But <laughs> if I would have known at the point, it said, but dig this, it said Google car right on it. Oh, wow, that's cool, man. I would have ruined it personally. No, guys, we're almost out of time. And before yeah, I, I forget, the geos are coming up right after this show. So I want to see everyone stay tuned Ole for Damagor that. Ola Damagor tonight, huh? Ola Damagor, the guy who has absolutely retaught me everything that I needed to know about false flags. He is going to be coming up right after the break. So please stay tuned for that. And again, one more time, thank you to everyone for tuning in tonight, guys. Amazing stuff. Hey, Kev. And, uh, Kev, can we get into the the to the geo car, the geo thing? Can can we access this? What's that? The next show. Uh, well, you, you can listen to it all you want, man. No problem. Geo's coming up next in just about a minute's time, and we, we you know we're about out of time. So, hey, I want to personally thank everybody that's uh, come into the chat tonight. We've had like record breaking chat participation tonight, and it's been awesome, awesome the whole time. So I would like to uh, personally thank everybody that uh, does that and supports TFR because we can't do this without you. And uh, all you guys, of course, JD, Popeye, We could, could, but it'd be really boring just talking to us. Phoenix, Johnny, damn. Great hey, night. Guys. Don't forget me. You're throwing me in that earthquake water all night. Nano girl. Nano, <laughs> but I'll say it again. Thank you, Nano, for coming on tonight. Thank you, Joe Joseph. It was a pleasure and a hand. Don't forget the light.